It's Thursday, and you know what that means. It is IndyCar Night on ERN. Hello again, everyone. I'm Gary Gonzalez, and welcome to the Elite Racing Network's coverage of Round 6 of the 2024 Warriors for Peace IndyCar Series season as we come to you from one of the crown jewels of po uh, the, of all of iRacing, and for certainly of all of IndyCar Racing, Pocono Raceway for the IndyCar 1909.com 500. Joining me in the booth tonight, and we're all kind of winging it here, fellas, so you just got to bear with us all, everybody at home. We got Brand Johnson, who is uh, coming to us from a long ways away, and when you hear his accent, you'll understand why. And also Chris White, right, also coming in a little bit closer in for tonight. Uh, fellas, how you doing tonight, and uh, are we set for 500 miles? Hey, Gary, yes, mate. It's a uh, nice, beautiful morning here in Perth, and uh, great to get up and, and uh, see what's happening in the IndyCars and Pocono. Great racetrack. What about you, Chris? Yeah, I'm, uh, I'm excited to see this. You know, it's uh, these ovals, Pocono is always a fun track. So these guys out here in these open wheel machines at Pocono, it's going to be a great race. Lots of strategy. It's all about who can get to that first or last pit stop first. So it should be a lot of fun to uh, see how it plays out and a lot of fun to get to work with you guys for the first time. Well, we'll get the uh, qualifications that's currently underway, but here are today's condition. 74 degree ambient, 45 degree humidity, partly cloudy with a light wind. So we should see close racing all the way around. Let's we'll start taking a look at what we got up on the uh, screen here. Provisionally on the pole, oh, Frankenfeld and Brophy at a dead heat, 41.66 to a 41.67. Uh, that is uh, uh, as close as they come here, folks. It's uh, Chad. He's had a few races where he hasn't quite got to the uh, checkered flag at the front. So hopefully he's due today. Yeah, he had a uh, an unfortunate. Uh, uh, he was an innocent victim last week at New Hampshire. Uh, P3 are currently on the uh, provisional pole, as we still have a little time left here in qualifying, is Adriano Panero, who uh, crashed out early there at Pocono. Ryan, excuse me, Ryan Schold, P4, a uh, good partner of mine, Nick Sudik, uh, from the Race First program, P5. Mark Murphy, another uh, associate of mine, is P6. Butch Davis, long-time sim racer. Back into the 90s, I raced with him. Butch Davis currently P, well, now eighth, because Eric Troiano, and the uh, Brazilian team there right up to seventh spot right at the very end. And uh, he snuck in. So we now have a full field. And uh, let's see if we can't get a uh, starting lineup here on the, uh, on the screen. Last time was a bit of an adventure trying to do that. Yeah, and you mentioned Chad's troubles there. You know, last week we had Chad dominate New Hampshire, get wrecked late. Just been a, a struggle season here so far for Chad in all the Elite Series. He's uh, he's had a lot of speed in, in multiple different series, multiple different races to start the season. Once again on the pull tonight, we'll see if, uh, like you mentioned there, can he get to the checker flag tonight without an issue. All right, let's get the starting lineup out there. Chad Frankenfeld currently P1. Jason Brophy by the slimmest of all margins, P2. Panero, P3. Shul, P4. Sudik, P5. Murphy, Troiano, Davis, Sora, Fody, your top 10. Move it on a little bit further on back. Of course, keep in mind, these are rows of two. Uh, we have uh, Jared Rexing, Deporto, Spinard, Milano, uh, excuse me, I hope I say this right, M Milio, Milio, I hope I say that, Justin, if not, just correct me after the fact. Hayes, Johnson, Malillo, Malillo, okay. Uh, Johnson, Hobson, and Stanley, and we do have a uh, really big field here tonight, so let's see if we can uh, move this. And again, I am learning a whole new overlay. Yeah, Justin Melillo is uh, how we say it. All right. There we go. Uh, from 16th and 17th, uh, we uh, 15th and 16th, uh, we got Hayes and Johnson. 17th, 18th is John Hobson and Staley. 19th and 20th. Back there in, uh, let's see, row 10. Uh, so is Ribulus and Hibbs, last week's winner. Shawan and Hasek, Peel in the row 11. Row 12, Edwards and Nick DeGroot. He has a long road to hoe in front of him. Uh, then we also have uh, Smith and Stover, Owens and Tucker. Tucker, another long road to hoe ahead of him. 
And uh, way back there and uh, the, the into the 30s, we got Morales and Kali. And that is, uh, we are we are going to look at 30 cars tonight, fellas. So uh, keep your eyes peeled. We're going to have action all over the place. But that is our 30 car field. Congre uh, good luck to everybody. And uh, let's get it uh, ready to go racing here as they are quickly coming up to the main straight here. And Pocono turn three, the tricky triangle. We'll talk more about the history of IndyCar racing here, the history of this facility, purpose built for IndyCar racing back in the day. Of course, we don't see them here anymore, but only an eye racing coming down field under the command of now Chad as he brings them up to speed quickly. We're underway 500 miles here at Pocono. Going to spread out five deep down that straightaway. And let's check out Panera on the low side of Brophy. Three wide of those cars through one. You could do that for a little while, but uh, only one victor on the exit there. And the runs down the straightaways are going to be huge. Dirty air will be a big factor tonight. See these guys running all over. I, I think we'll see them running all over every corner, especially turn one here throughout this race. Yeah, the last corner is all uh, is tricky enough as it is, and uh, when you start <laughs> to throw in a lot of dirty air, it's uh, it's really going to be tough through there tonight for for everyone. And we got what 500 laps, 200 laps, two and a half mile over, 200 laps, 500 miles, and Brophy is wasting no miles. time. He had a win. Uh, I, I'm not going to say take it away from him, but definitely a hard earned win last week, and he's going right to the front right now. Oh, we got a big wreck back here, Gavin yes. Hibbs. Hibbs, last week's winner. Not a way that he wanted to start. Oof. Well, let's see if we get a look at what happened here. And car to the inside gives him a little bit of help. And last week's winner doesn't even make it five miles and collects two other cars in the process, three other cars in the process and is done for the day. Another car. I think Everything that's Nick so and fast. Brian Edwards. Brian and Edwards, Josh Tucker, Shawin involved, Morales involved. A big multi-car accident here in the opening laps. And there we see him trying to bring that car back, wobbling the pit road. Oh. Morales is so unlucky there. He he was just coming through. He's let off and uh, somehow been clipped. He is an innocent bystander out of all that. Yeah, a lot of a uh, lot of carnage on that first lap. When you get thirty cars in in close proximity to one another, it doesn't really take much to start the old ping pong action from starting here. And unfortunately, we have a number of guys that are going to pit road. Um, to get looked at, uh, involved in the wreck, Gavin Hibbs, Michael Hossack, Brian Edwards, Nick DeGroot, Josh Tucker, Tony Snowen, uh, <laughs> excuse me, Tony Shawin, uh with the Power Slides Motorsport entry. All of those were involved. Uh, you mentioned Morales. Looks like he's back underway. There he is. Uh, and he is uh, under power right now. Looks like everything is okay on the Lamborghini-sponsored Delara. Uh, but uh, already 30 cars started and we're down to 24 as the number are still uh, getting worked on in pit roads. There's Hibbs, Osik right there. He's getting worked on. Edwards, Nick DeGroote uh, in his first start in a while. Josh Tucker, we knew that he was going to be fast from the back. Unfortunately, he got collected. And then it uh, looks like Tony Shawin is already punched out. So, uh, wow, that is uh, very unfortunate to see uh, that uh, already that action and that uh, level of carnage on the first uh, couple of laps here at Pocono. I'm trying to see if there's a little bit of net code in there at all, or is, is it a fair clip on the tire? Well, I can't tell you that uh, Race Control gave the tally to the 17. I, race Control oh, I did not that. see any net code. It looked like he just pushed up off the bottom, got into the guy, and, and yep, they were all wrecked enough. over there. Well, we do have some first-in-hand information from uh, Race Control there, Chris. A great job, mate. I don't know about that. Depends on who you ask, probably, if I'm doing a great <laughs> job or not. We're all winging it tonight, folks. Thanks for uh, uh, thanks for joining us, though. We are very early, as you see, when 4 I'm of 20. Four, two, when four, I'm racing, 200. if you give me a tally.
The lights are still on the pace car. As mentioned, uh, this was a purpose-built facility for IndyCars. They had IndyCars in mind uh, in the late 60s. Uh, this was the honeymoon capital of the world, or at least the United States. Uh, so they thought another way to want to bring people here is bring IndyCar racing. IndyCar racing, at least on the USAC Champ Car side of thing, was the biggest form of auto racing in the entire United States at the time. Uh, now, depending on who you ask, it's either going to be NASCAR or Formula One before IndyCar. But back in the 60s, uh, IndyCar was king of racing in the States. So when they built this place, they took three tracks and uh, decided they wanted to take uh, some redeeming qualities of those tracks. So turn one is modeled after Trenton, which was a track in New Jersey. It's no longer there, but that was famously shaped like a bit of a kidney bean. So take Phoenix and make the dogleg go the other direction. And that's kind of what uh, you can uh, picture Phoenix or Trenton as. Trenton is also a mile and a half oval. Uh, then, of course, turn two, very flat, nine degrees of banking, Indianapolis. Turn three, Milwaukee, uh, that very flat, very uh, uh, wide turns they had there in Milwaukee. All of those have been long term, long time IndyCar tracks. In fact, there have been more IndyCar races at Milwaukee, at the Milwaukee Mile than at the Indianapolis Internet or Indianapolis Speedway. So, uh, just to let you know how uh, when IndyCar returns back to Milwaukee later this year, for real, uh, there are been historically more races at Milwaukee than there ever has been at the uh, at IMS. The reason because of that is uh, they used to have two races a year at uh, Milwaukee, just like they're going to have this year. They're going to have a doubleheader. Lights are out on the pace car. Uh, when USAC did come here for the first time, Peter Revson had the track record. If you know Peter Revson from F1 fame, he was driving for McLaren Racing. This was set in 73 when they first opened with a speed of 190.468 miles per hour. Emerson Fittipaldi set the kart track record back in 89, the very last kart race here. Kart abandoned the place because it was said it was uh, very unsafe and bumpy with a speed of 211.715. And then when IndyCar returned, uh, back in the uh, the teens with the DW12s, uh, Juan Pablo Montoya driving from Team Pinsky in 2014 set a lap of 223.871 miles per hour. Your career IndyCar wins leaders here, none other than A.J. Foyt, the king, or not uh, the king, but super techs, let's put it that way, with four wins. Rick Mears, Will Power, uh, believe it or not, Will Power uh, tied all-time second with three. Danny Sullivan, Alan Sir Sr., and Bobby Unser each have two just so put will powers uh, career into perspective he has three of his five 500 mile wins at this track getting ready to go green green field is being brought down by jason brophy field is under his command and here we go fellas we are back green on lap six uh, actually, we got that manual. Uh, actually, they're, they're do, they do the, I'm sorry. This is because I do official races all the time. Uh, they do the uh, the wise IndyCar racing uh, style of restarts here. So what they do here, um, if you're not familiar and uh, if you forgot, just like me, the pace car goes in and then the field goes under the command of the leader, which they bring the cars around at a slightly faster speed. And then he will have a, a, a bit of a uh, run restart at it in turn three. So it's not an, a, quite the a, a accordion style uh, incidents that we see uh, uh, on some of the official races. If you ever watch any of those that we cover on uh, Race First, for example. But uh, the field is under the command of Jason Brophy. The field is locked in the current positions and he will bring us back to green here when they reach back around uh, the start finish line to start lap seven. Now I have a question and we might might be able to cover this the next caution since we're about to go green, but uh, why did IndyCar stop coming here? Because this was always one of the races outside of the Indy 500 that as a NASCAR fan, I always enjoyed watching an IndyCar race. Open up. Yeah, it was one of the crown jewels and, and one of the big reasons is that, the, well, IndyCars have very little suspension. They do have suspension, but they ride as stiff as a board. And uh, back before, really, uh, they they kind of gave this this place a good paving and everything. It was way too rough rough for the Indy cars. Um, go back and watch uh, some of the uh, the videos from '89 on uh, YouTube. And uh, these those in car cameras, those poor drivers were just being beat to all get out. And uh, well, right now beating the field is Jason Brophy as he's back on it, and we are back underway. Hopefully a little more uh, orderly, and we'll start to get a few laps under the belt. How many have we <laughs> completed so far, Gary? <laughs> That's lap seven, and uh, we did have a couple guys in the back that decided to stop. Uh, uh, Deporto, uh, Bill Colley, uh, Melillo, uh, Morales, and uh, Hasek, although I think those two of them were involved in the wreck, but we did have a couple cars in the back decide to stop 
uh, which uh, might help uh, their uh, uh, strategy-wise, depending on when the next caution falls and when the next uh, um, pit stops occur, which I do have some intelligence on that, fellas. And I got that from uh, a driver earlier tonight. And they're He's, expecting... He's uh, divulging a little bit of information, was Yes, it? yes. I'm not saying who. I'm not saying who. But they, they expect a, a full run, uh, no drafting help, 28 laps, uh, with savings, 32. Going to make the, the last couple of stints, uh, depending how they, they're going with the fuel saving, uh, quite enjoyable, I think. We'll start to see some... Uh, the finish will be really good. Uh, I noticed Gavin Hibbs is still in the pit, so I'm not sure he'll be, if he comes out. He's certainly his race will be done by now. And De Groot and Hossack spent uh, about five minutes to six minutes in the pits themselves, so uh, they're back out on track. They must be uh, a lap or two down. Yeah, their cars are going to be pretty well trashed. So what they're probably doing here is uh, trying to get uh, certainly those positions made up uh, of the others that were involved in the wreck, so they can move higher into the standings. And then, uh, next thing is to try, really try to stay out of everyone else's way. But I noticed Chad Frankenfield has gone to the front. He, uh, I don't think you want to sit in the dirty air of Brophy for, for 200 laps. No. It's, uh, it does get very untidy <laughs> through that last corner. Very untidy. Yeah, but just like Gary said, that guy out front is not going to be saving near the fuel that second, third, fourth on back are going to be able to save and lift and Watch Davis to the inside. Oh, Murph slices down on him. Gives him the dirty air. Couldn't quite pull off that pass. You can see that they, coming through turn one, you know, they really do spread out wide across the track so they, they get out of that dirty air, get a bit of clean air coming through. Stick the, the wing out just to help with the turn in as well. Here they come here, same deal, coming off the back. Now we got Nick Sudik underneath Murph, gets the position. Oh, keeps Sudik in fifth, Murph in sixth, Butch Davis seventh, Presley Sora eighth, Fody ninth, Troiano back in tenth. A lot of swapping in the mid pack, but uh, currently watching a good, good battle right here for about fourth, fifth, sixth, and seventh. So Hunter Smith all the way back in uh, 16th has set the fastest lap. Oh, and as I say that, yes, yeah, that's still Hunter Smith with a 41.4 all the way down at the back. I thought a couple of the higher guys, you know, Murphy, Sora, Davis, might be the ones to benefit uh, and get a few faster laps in. Well, I would say from a strategic point of view, from where Hunter is, he needs to move. He has no yeah. time to wait. He needs to get going. He needs to get going now. Uh, I would say Panero, Sudik, Murphy, we'll go back up to those and go watch those guys. They have the leader directly in sight. So now every IndyCar race, the first strategy that you think of uh, once you take the green flag going into turn one is fuel conservation. Every race across the board, doesn't matter what it is, is fuel conservation. These guys are thinking anything anything to make an edge to skip a pit stop oh murph down low coming in turn of three under uh, under uh, excuse me panero he lost a lot of momentum there but they these guys up here are definitely thinking fuel conservation here comes butch davis taking a look at the inside again on that uh, stp throwback looking sponsorship and sora underneath butch cars up high right behind him three wide up against the wall it's um it's funny you say that uh, Hunter needs to get moving because he's up 10 spots already. So he obviously started, you know, right at the back of the field and he's trying to get his way up to the front where he can settle into a good rhythm and uh, start to feel safe for all the, the amount he's using at the moment. Yeah, he is our biggest gainer, up 10 spots. Meanwhile, at the front, Chad still not getting away. Schuld is now P2. He got around Jason Brophy. Brophy... Probably he's also thinking a little bit more of what we're thinking up here in the booth. Let's start saving some miles and saving some drops of fuel. Look at him up high. Need just enough uh, wind on those uh, front wings of his to uh, help the downforce and help the car rotate. Presley Sora getting uh, taking a peek on Butch.
tell you what, that I'm Mark Murphy, some... Nicholas Sudak, Butch Davis battle just will not quit. No. Yeah, that is very entertaining. These guys, uh, Panero, Sudik, Murphy, uh, they've been racing each other all week this week at Michigan. This is Michigan week for uh, Indy Fixed. Um, so uh, they've been trying to do a little uh, IR building, a little IR farming this week on the uh, iRacing service. So I'm sure they've been in multiple races together this week. But the nice thing about that is that you build a rapport and trust with these guys around you, and you have a real idea that uh, they're, they're going to be making controlled moves. They're not going to be jerking the wheel in front of you. Presley Sora gets around uh, Butch Davis now, move him up to seventh, right behind Mark Murphy. He's running the high side. Uh, Butch down low in the three. Problem is, Butch is not going to have anyone to draft with down the straight, trying to get closer, crowding him a little bit on the exit, not going to be able to pull it off. Now he has someone to draft with as, Frank, uh, as Murph pulls down. Down. Now you get back in line for the turn. I'm not sure that IR farming actually works out, Gary, because every time I try it, it costs me 500. I did pick up a couple of hundred points uh, in two races this week. Managed to uh, jump in a GT3 car and, and put a little bit on the road racing, but I guarantee you, if I try it this weekend, I will drop 500. There's certain tracks where the really good drivers can do farming uh, for uh, for IndyCar and the IndyCar fix. Pocono is actually one of those tracks. Uh, Michigan is uh, another one. Uh, California is another one. But yeah, you don't go IR farming at when IndyCar week goes to, uh, let's say, Daytona. And we're not talking the road course. <laughs> that's maybe my problem because that's one of the best tracks. <laughs> No lie, any cars. Uh, th there's a reason they don't go there for real. <laughs> yeah. But uh, in the in the virtual world, they are a lot of fun at those tracks. Yep. Now, do you know why uh, Mr. Frankenfield has got a no skin on his car tonight? I haven't seen any sponsors on his car. Maybe it's just my screen. It might be your but screen. I, I got the uh, I got him in the uh, Scott Sharp throwback. Uh, with his uh, uh, sponsorship on the side there. So uh, that's what I had him least in last week. Yep. That's why I can't see it. This is the only one. Not sure why. Yeah, he and uh, his little Eagle teammate, Ryan P2. And then also uh, running with them is Mark Murphy in the, uh, in the race versus badge car. Now, Chris might know the answer to this, but where's Jason Brophy come from, Chris? Because, you know, he's jumped into the IndyCar, into the... Um, IndyCar series and just absolutely taken it by storm and uh, it's like he's come from nowhere well I think this is the only series he's in so I'm not really familiar with the I guy at him. all I haven't seen him I got you guys any stock car stuff. I got you guys uh, let's a uh, bit butch back there three wide just trying to keep the action uh, on the camera here uh, Jason Brophy, um, I know him from the uh, Linehart IndyCar series and also he does a lot of official uh, iRacing uh, IndyCar races as well such as uh, this week here, uh, we, we saw him at the uh, Indy Open. Indy Open is at Pocono this week, so he's been doing multiple, uh, multiple, multiple races at Pocono this week with the Indy Open series, uh, which is the open setup. And uh, he races yeah. there. He also races uh, in certain Indy Fix races, also races in the uh, Lionheart IndyCar series, uh, which uh, he's a multi-time winner there that I've raced against him. He is a fierce competitor, a great driver, and uh, if there's any one of these drivers on this track that uh, you could go wheel to wheel with without him bashing into you, he's certainly high on the list. He will. He well, is. A, he has great car control. He reminds me of Nigel Mansell in the when he first got into the Indy cars and just took the world by storm. I mean, he was always a great driver in the F1s before he moved over. But uh, Brophy's been the same. He's come in here and uh, just straight up the front. You know, you never see him out of the top two or three. And he's uh, really been racing well. Nigel with one 500-mile race win, and to his credit in history, back in '93, he uh, brought home the crown at the Michigan 500. He's probably my favorite uh, IndyCar driver was Nigel Mansell when I was growing up. He didn't spend too long in there, but I loved him. Yeah, just a couple of seasons, and then I, I think uh, Bernie brought him back. <laughs> it's like, nah, you can come back. You got too many international fans like an IndyCar. <laughs> yeah. But talking about Brophy, I believe he's the point leader as well. You talk about coming out of nowhere and all of a sudden he's taking it to these boys. I heard some drivers talking about that today. 
Yeah, let's uh, yeah. bring up, uh, we're in that point where we're kind of starting to get into no man's land with these laps. Probably staring at pit stops happening very, very shortly. Let's uh, go ahead and uh, clear the screen here and try to bring up uh, the points. If they'll show for it. There you go. Um, now I just got to uh, get the points to scroll up. There we go. Why does it start at the bottom? I don't understand that. <laughs> but there you go. You can see Jason Brophy with the uh, uh, with the points lead. 166 over 146 over Ethan Stanley. Tyler Fody there, 129. Jared Rexing just a couple points behind him with 127. Craig Forsyth not in the lineup tonight with the 126. Panero could really use some points after a bad finish at, at uh, um, New Hampshire last week with 119. And Victor Del Porto with the 103. Those are all the drivers over the uh, 100 point mark. But uh, this is uh, this is where I expect to see um, Jason Brophy. I, I expect to always see him at the top of the standings, and uh, whether it's beyond the track or in the points. Here comes Panero trying to follow through. Almost makes contact, which wisely gets him in line. Now he's part of a little legal sandwich because here comes Mark Murphy. One, three, oh, excuse me, one, two, and four. And here comes Adriano Pinero. He is pitting, I'm going to say, a little early, fellas, maybe? Uh, at least five laps early, I reckon. Um, he's obviously got a different strategy in mind and thinking it towards the end of the race, you know, where he might be able to uh, still keep going when others need to pit. I'll tell you this, too. Something about these open wheel guys if you talk to them before the race, they'll tell you what laps they're going to pit on. Yeah. It doesn't matter when the cautions fall. What exactly. Happens when, myself being a stock car guy, I broadcast a stock car series on Elite. I race in a series. We're pitting when the cautions come out. We're not really thinking about, oh, we're going to pit on this lap, that lap, and, and then we're going to pit here. These guys will tell you, hey, we're pitting right here, 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 and here. Well, look where he pops out. If we can uh, get a higher view, he should be... Uh right ahead of the leaders so uh that's the that's this place is nice because it's so big uh you don't go a lap down if you're in close contention to the leaders so that's exactly yeah. where he was and that's exactly what he executed full tank and four new firestones and he's back underway and uh give you an idea we do have tire limits uh here are the uh the race uh format bringing up on screen for you there 200 laps, 500 miles, 10 sets of tires, and of course there is a track record there by Juan Montoya of a 223.871 set in 2014. And you look way down at the end of the stra uh, straightaway behind Panero, and there are your leaders. So right now, he's racing like mad to uh, make as much distance between those guys and him. And you see him entering turn one as he's out in the middle of the uh, long pond straight. Jason Brophy pitted right here as well, but he lost a lap in the cycle. He did, and I don't know if he had a uh, possibly a uh, pit road penalty. Do we see anything on pit road? Was oh, he had he was missing. Oh, he wrecks coming into pit road. Oh, oh okay. Then lap uh, twenty-four points leader, major points implications here for the season. Let's see if oh, we can uh, look at... He has it, locked it up badly. Let's see if oh. we can uh, go back in time a little bit and see what happened there. Oh, he uh, just misjudged that very badly. and um, It's hard. It's very hard. Yeah. It's it's very hard here. And uh, so he's just coming off the uh, turn three, and uh, he doesn't really have much dirty air. He's going to have a little dirty air from Frankenfeld, who's right in front of him there. I maybe went a little bit too far. Here comes uh, Murph down. Now he's now he's really getting a lot of dirty air. You can see his left front, his left tires are right on the rumble strip. He's trying to help the car rotate. He's under braking, bringing it down from 200 miles per hour to I think uh, 200 plus, I think to 45 on pit road. And you have this little space because the cones are on you immediately. Unlike Indianapolis, where you had a little bit of extra. And there's the lockup, and he just clips the the uh the buckets there the bins yeah really lucky to be able to continue on really that could have been that could have been a race ender so he yeah, is uh, back somebody. underway unfortunately but down a lap but uh the little legal guys are certainly dominating the front and presley sora he has worked his way up into this battle as well 
Yeah, the brakes on these, when you start to get to those real low speeds, uh, just become a lot more touchy. You know, they're not great. And so if you pinch them just a little bit like you needed to, that's, uh, that's what happens. Yeah, they have different brakes. Now, in real world Indy car, car racing, they have different brakes on these things for oval races and for super speedways. They're really thin discs. There's not a lot there. They want to save on weight and everything. And uh, watching this battle yep. with uh, Ryan and uh, Presley here. Uh, running out of room. You can run out of room real quick on the high side of two there. And Presley did a good job. But they have real little discs. And so the, the car does not stop as fastly, fast as it would, say, on a road course where they have more robust dicks. discs. Oh, gosh, Gary. Uh, discs. Anyway. What was that? I, I don't remember what I said. Discs. But someone <laughs> can save that and just repeat it in a, on a soundboard for me, and that will be uh, just me. Anyways. Uh, but what we were saying is that, that yeah, these cars, and then you, you don't have, you have in the car, and this is another thing that you really, you do have in the, in the stock car, but you don't play with it that much in the stock car unless you're having handling issue. That's brake bias. So these cars on the, on typically on uh, ovals are going to have most of their brake bias uh, in one direction or the other. It's just a driver preference. And for me, on an oval, I want more brake bias to the rear. And it's possible that he he had more brake bias to the front, and then he hit his brakes, and then the the front locked up, and it came and it helps him, you know, kind of come around like that. That's possible. I don't know. Jason Brophy's a very smart driver. You don't see him make a lot of mistakes, so that is kind of rare to even see that happen. But I feel bad for him. If anyone can come back from it, it's him. Yeah, and it's not going to be a night ender. He was able to get a fix. He just lost a little bit of front wing. He blended back in traffic, and he's working his way through the field, pit stops are going to cycle through. He's not going to be back at the front, but I think he still will be attached to the pack and be able to draft his way through. Now, one thing I want to point out here, too, I think somebody lied to you about 28 to 32 laps because we're coming to yep. lap 32, and uh, we've only had a couple guys stop. Yeah. Oh, we got contact up here towards the front. One car hard in the oh. wall. Oh, one car Ryan. barrel. That's down. Ryan, and he's into the pit area. <laughs> oh, my goodness. That was vicious. And this uh, contact with Sora coming off of three, probably the fastest point of three. Sora hits the wall. He goes to the inside, launches Ryan over the bins and yeah, into it looks pit like road. Ryan, is, uh, Ryan has just slid up a little bit going up the inside, maybe yeah. got a bit of dirty air as he, as he come down. And uh, unfortunately, I think Ryan's going to end up with a tally on that one. Yeah, but I don't think that car will roll, so that's uh, unfortunate. Yeah, so he's he's tried to get out of it on the exit, and uh, so they didn't hit hit the uh, other car, but uh, just clipped him. And Oof. that's at least a nine point three out of ten for difficulty as he uh, <laughs> barrel rolled his way through the pit lane. Yeah, there. and that I was... think that uh, that's somewhat terminal for uh, for Sora as well. So the field is now under caution, and uh, behind no, no a caution. No, no caution. caution came out. No, nope, that all happened because we had a car. Right, we car okay, well we are. Back underway still. No caution. That's weird. And here come people down uh, Frankenfeld down pit road. If I can get the camera on him, there he is. Just it's so hard getting the car down the, down on speed. Now once you're on pit road, that's the easy job because you got a button that, that takes care of everything else, provided if you hit the button. And there's some people that haven't. Uh, meanwhile, uh, let's uh, not we we continue to not want to rule out Jason Brophy. And I'll tell you why. There's been more than one case in IndyCar history where uh, on a two-and-a-half-mile oval where a driver more than one lap down has come back to win. So let's keep an eye on him. He's not out of it yet. It's still early, 34 laps, less than 100 miles into this thing. He, he still has a shot if he catches the precautions at the right time. Yeah, but he, I think he'll end up, you know, towards the back of the pack by the time they come out. And he is good enough that he will just slice his way through that field slowly over the next, you know, 50, 75 laps and he'll be back up in contention, you know, within, uh, I reckon, two, two field stops. He'll be back. That's my prediction. Now, Ethan Stanley is now your leader. Nick Sudik is currently in second. Nick, I know Nick, and uh, I know he is saving fuel behind uh, on this battle right here. And uh, I believe Nick does have the purple lap now, 41-3. Yeah, and he's... Just in, just behind Ethan Stanley, uh, is, uh, looks as though Stanley's going to pit road. Now. So now it's uh, Butch Davis. Spot. Yeah, he's done a great job. Stanley has. 
And Butch Davis now doesn't want to wait, wants to get some uh, laps led for his uh, team and sponsors. And uh, the, the fact that Nick kind of let him do that uh, says that kind of Nick saved him. But Nick proven me wrong, going to the inside here in the tunnel turn, turn two. And he pulls off the pass. So now we see if these two are going to hit pit road. Still have not pit, 35 laps into their stint. Um, I was surprised to see that Chad actually came out behind Mark Murphy and Here not we just go. by a couple of cars. It's, it took him a little while to get back and he's, Mark Murphy's just gone back past him now. But uh, yeah, I would have expected Chad to come out well in front uh, of Mark Murphy. Well, Lots follow. of cars on the road right here this time. Yep. Mm. It's right along with uh, Chad. As he's in the uh, in the draft of his uh, teammate Mark Murphy, uh, not right yeah. now. He's uh, taking a different line through uh, Pocono Turn Three, which is model after uh, Milwaukee. Yeah, Down I was the watching them, and they were just changing positions. Uh, yeah. And look at all the, the cars coming off laps. pit road to their inside. They got to be cognizant of that. Those guys could come off the button actually with cold tires, spin out, get in around them very safely. Drops a gear going into Turn One. One, well, this is one thing that IndyCar drivers and NASCAR drivers have common here at Pocono, where they're shifting on, during the lap. Um, and I don't know about maybe on the uh, next-gen car. I don't know if they shift here, uh, but I know on the old car before that, they would used to shift here at least once or twice a lap. I can't confirm with the next-gen car, the stock cars, you're shifting everywhere. In Martinsville to Pocono, everywhere you're shifting. There we go. Fifth gear, got the lights on there. It says shift and six, getting up against that rev limiter. Got a big pull down the straightaway to the inside. Going to set it against his uh, teammate. Goes the fourth gear. Teammate's still on the outside. They're going side by side. That's why you don't see him going against the wall. Now he's clear. Tucks back in. Single file through turn two, just like Indianapolis. Don't want to clip that what? apron. Victor Del Porto is on quite the economy run right now. And let's check out Victor here. Victor on one of those power Brazilian teams. He is out there for 39 laps. That's quite a bit over that 30 to 32, right? Or 28, 32. Here he yeah. comes. Yeah, here he comes. We'll get a better idea now once they've established first stops of kind of what strategies are doing. Bill Colley coming in and Ethan Stanley, uh, who has stopped, uh, is now going to uh, pick up the lead with Adriano Pinero. So the winner out of the pit stops has to be Panero there. Yes. He's done that very well. And Ethan Stanley, uh, you know, this will show that it'll be 16 spots by the time it all comes back around. That's a great improvement, and he's now got himself sitting second. And there's a lot of traffic out here with our leaders, too. Well, while we have the uh, camera on Ethan Stanley and the, uh, and the sponsor car, we do want to thank uh, the guys at uh, Blue Egg Marketing. Blue Egg... The marketing department for small businesses. We're your marketing department. Small business owners. Blue Egg is your biggest fan. Constraints catalyze creativity. We help businesses punch above their weight class. Blue Egg Marketing, proud sponsor of the IndyCar Series here and a proud sponsor of Ethan Stanley. So let's do a bit of a reset here after stint one complete. 41 in the books here for the IndyCar 1909.com 500 here at Pocono. Your top 10 is Ethan Stanley, who just took command of that position over Adrian Opanero from uh, the uh, Corinthian BK Racing Team. Butch Davis P3, Nick Sudi P4, Mark Murphy P5, Chad Frankenfeld, who started on the pole P6, Kevin Hayes P7. Uh, we got Eric Triano P8, Jared Rexing P9, and Chris Samard P10. That is your top 10. We got about 100 miles into the books now, guys. Yeah, and, and so Victor did great there, too. Victor, with that economy run, he's still in the top 15. And we talked about Jason Brophy's problems. He is still running 15th. He lost about five or six seconds. You know, he's not with that lead group, but he is uh, – and a great spot to recover with the timely caution or some great pitch strategy the rest of this race. Oh, yeah. Porto did uh, 40 laps 
on his stint. So he crossed the start finish line uh, while he was on pit road to go down, get the 40th lap. So um, let's see what he only has five full stops to go in order to make it to the finish now. That's a, exactly five full stops to go. These guys have stopped earlier and might have to stop again if we go green all the way to the end. Yeah, and we talked about Adriano. He pitted at, what, 23? So Victor nearly doubled that. Yeah, I think uh, Adriano was trying to do a little strategy there. Um, the very early pit window at Indianapolis, for instance, opens at lap 20. Uh, and then you would go every 30 laps after that, roughly. And then that would take you exactly to lap 200. That's possible that he's using a very a simple, a, a similar strategy. And that's, I think what he's doing is he's counting backwards and uh, from 200 on down to one. And I think that's what he's doing there. And it's, it's not a bad strategy. And uh, he is, he has multiple, multiple, multiple wins. I mean, probably in the hundreds and official races on iRacing, the guy knows what he's doing. So if he thinks that he could do it here uh, by stopping on 23, unless... The only thing I can think of is maybe he hit something and he thought he had damage. And we wouldn't know that, but uh, uh, I think he knows what he's doing. Panero is 100% uh, uh, just a massive strategist. I've seen uh, some of the videos that he's posted in the group, and that guy, he knows exactly what's going on, and he's uh, set himself up so he does a full final run <laughs> where others have to come in and pit. Maybe he gets a yellow, and he gets a nice win. Yeah, he had a bit of a rough uh, Tuesday night during the uh, the top split race we broadcast on Race First at Michigan. It was a uh, a 4505 strength of field, so it was a big one. And uh, he lost his force feedback in his wheel and did the whole race uh, without force feedback. I've got issues with my wheel at the moment. I'm trying to sort it out with Sim Magic, and uh, that is hard work with no feedback. The the wheel just feels so light in your hands and not feeling what's going on with the car, it is r horrendous. Yeah. Now, I'm an average racer. He's an unbelievable racer, so I'd love to see how we went with it. I forgot how he finished. I think there was a big wreck there toward the end that was of uh, none of his... He was an innocent bystander, I think, on that one. But, uh, yeah, when you lose your force <laughs> feedback, you can't feel anything. Nothing. No. The small twitch that you're coming off a corner and maybe the rear's starting to come on you and you can try and catch that... None of that feeling. Uh, yeah, that would have been horrendous. Now the guy in third, Butch Davis, um, he and I know each other back from the 90s in the original iteration of the Papyrus IndyCar racing game. And we would uh, do sim racing in what would be called offline leagues back in the day where you would run your race and then everyone would submit their results and compare them against each other. And that's how you would finish. We did not have force feedback in those in those wheels back in the day. <laughs> they just they had uh, a spring in them. They would spring back to the center, but that was it. I yeah, uh, I couldn't afford a wheel back then. I used to have to do papyrus on a uh, keyboard. It was very difficult. Yeah, behind he's moved up now to P4. Behind Butch, staying in the draft. I think everyone now. We are really in the point where everyone is trying to economize these runs, and especially if you watch how Panero and Stanley are racing, where they're constantly swapping back and forth. Uh, they are uh, trying to uh, help each other out a little bit and trying to put some distance on Butch Davis. Uh, the third car typically in a two-car draft line in IndyCar racing typically catches a face full of dirty air. Not in this track necessarily. You see three lines through one, Butch is maintaining, but Butch is very slowly losing the gap. And I love that Butch scheme. You know, a lot of people will look at that and say, oh, look at that petty throwback, but I believe, I believe that is a throwback to John Andretti. Yeah, John Cup Andretti race. to the uh, Windows World car that he drove, I believe, in his final uh, 500 here in Indianapolis. And the King was part of that team. Uh, uh, Richard uh, Richard Petty was part of that team and, and helped get uh, some funding there for that team. And I did have some, ST I think it did have some STT, STP sponsorship on it and some stuff. Um, I forget. I have to go back and look and see where John finished. But, uh, of course, John is one of the originals to pull the, the, the Indy Charlotte double. So he'll go down in history. And he's the nephew of uh, A.J. Foyt. A lot of people forget that. 
And John is one of the most underrated drivers to ever sit oh, yeah. in the wheel. Oh, of yeah. Anything. yeah. He was a really good yeah. stock car driver. I think he, he went way above his pay grade there at, at Petty when he was there in the late 90s. Oh, yeah. He was one of the few uh, drivers ever, and there's not a very long list, to win a Winston Cup. I think at the time of Winston Cup race, it might have been uh, still Winston Cup then. Uh, where he uh, he won in the RCA car, if I remember right, there for uh, Kelly Arborough. And then he also uh, won for uh, uh, for Dean Hall in the IndyCar series at, of all places, Surfer's Paradise. Uh, he won there on the road course. So very versatile. Won uh, Super Speedways in NASCAR and won in IndyCar as well. Yeah, he also won a race at Martinsville driving for Richard Petty. In yes, he did. You're right. Seven. One of the first cars that had the drop snout on it, I believe that was one of the uh, things that Robbie Loomis pioneered who later worked with Jeff Gordon. I have to say, Surface Paradise track is, uh, you know, that was so tough on drivers and cars. <laughs> so tough. And, it was uh, it was chicane, know, slow down, chicane, slow down, shook. <laughs> That's all that really that track was a lot of chicanes. But it was more enclosed than than Mount Panorama with the the concrete walls all around you. Yeah. It was really just anything offline, you're in trouble. Let's give a shout to Kevin Hayes, up eight spots here in P7, right there in the purple rig, riding light right along. You know who's not saving fuel? Chad Frankenfield. He is trying to get up here and get this lead back after coming after those pit stops. He was about sixth or seventh. He is uh, back on kill. He wants to lead all the laps. So back in the day, uh, for the longest time, Pocono, uh, two points in history, uh, in IndyCar history, Pocono was part of the USAC and then IndyCar Triple Crown. So just how hard is it to win the IndyCar Triple Crown? Well, let me just tell you, to put it in perspective, how hard it is to first win a single 500-mile race car into the wall. I believe that is Ryan... Uh is that Jay well, we got Jason Owens limping to pit road. Now, that might have been who I saw. And let's uh, let's see if we can find uh, what happened there. Well, I believe Jordan just clipped the apron over there in the tunnel turn and then smashed the wall. Yeah, that car back. broke. Yeah, that car is uh, not coming back at all. We'll we'll rewind it a little bit to, to see uh, what happened to him. I, I think you said you clipped the uh, clipped the apron there in the tunnel turn. Yeah, and Jordan's one of those stock car guys, so he might have did that thinking, "Oh, it's going to free the car up." But you can't. Well, really it use the does. Apron in these well, wheel cars. It, it does free the car up. And watch, right there, car free. <laughs> <laughs> you just can't do it, and uh, yeah, that's yeah, that's. Yeah, we... in a stock car, you can do it, and it'll help the car turn. It's not going to right, run yet. right, exactly. Uh, we have a saying uh, on the race first broadcast: uh, uh, apron bad. Very, just very simple. That apron bad. Don't clip the apron. Uh, it will unload these cars, and you're kind of when you're when you're at those mile and a half tracks, the the the, the new cookie cutters. When you go to when the you can see a lot of them go to the apron. Uh, a lot of times, any car racing uh, rules on iRacing, they'll let you go to the apron, provided that you're coming to the checker. And the number of wrecks that we've seen in any car races as cars are going to the apron, it's just not very pretty. But we got a four-way breakaway right now. Stanley, Frankenfeld, Davis, and Murphy. Uh, but uh, back to what I was saying before, uh, since 1950, and that's kind of uh, the magic number there, 67 drivers have won a combined 141 500-mile races uh, between USAC, CART, IRL, Champ Car, and IndyCar. Those are all the governing bodies. Of those 66, the top five 500-mile race winners in history are A.J. Foyt. To no one's surprise, he has nine of them. Uh, four here, four at Indy, and then one at Ontario. And then uh, followed by Allenser Sr., Rick Mears with eight, Bobby Unser with seven. And the one that really surprised is everybody is Will Power, who is a current driver today. He has five 500-mile uh, wins, one at Indy, one at California, and three here at Pocono. So just put his career into perspective. Butch Davis taking a look to the inside on the main straight on Frankenfeld. And one thing that's happened here, Adriano has pitted. Jason Brophy, much cleaner time this time down pit road. He's blending out as uh, the leaders go by here at the top as well. Yeah, he got back on the lead lap, but uh, that uh, it's going to put him back down. But if he can stay with these guys, and I think what he's he's going to want to run hard. 
fuel economy savings is not in his, especially if we stay green, is not in his playbook for today. Every lap is like a push lap for him. Yeah, and if we uh, play by the same tune as last time, I think we're still about six or eight laps away from the bulk of the guys pitting. But Jason has done a great job. He has closed the gap back to these guys. If you, uh, you know, I know he's a lap down and Adriano is not, but the gap from Adriano to, to Jason is not not that big, and that's what he's banking on here. Probably re being able to get back into the top ten here this next cycle. Let's look out the rear of Adriano, see where the leaders are. There they are. Just a turn away. Just a small, the short straight away between three and uh, two and three. But he's going to want to hustle. And these drivers are, uh, you're right, we're looking at pit road stops here uh, for a lot of these guys very, uh, very soon. Now, 10 drivers have won at least a 500 mile race at, at, least, at, at least three of the Triple Crown venues, uh, which are Indianapolis, Ontario, Pocono, Michigan, and Montana over history. Those drivers are either Hall of Famers or soon to be first ballot Hall of Famers. Boyd, Dunsers, Mears, Power, along with Gordon Johncock, Johnny Rutherford, Mario Andretti, Danny Sullivan, Tony Kanan, and Juan Montoya, all winning at uh, multiple 500 mile race tracks. Uh, with the last two, Kanan and Montoya splitting race wins between CART and IndyCar. Two drivers have actually won 500 mile races in three consecutive seasons. Bobby Unser won one each year from 78 to 81. Will Power won one every year from 2016 to, eight to 2018. Won two in a row here, and then 2018 won in Indianapolis. And IndyCar is running out of 500 mile races now. I know that yeah, the just Indianapolis. RP, is, RP yep. is trying to, to change some schedule things, <clears> and I know there's a big push to get back to Pocono, but Fontana won't be coming back. That place is. Uh, going to be totally different when it's finished and what's your opinion on what they're doing to Fontana crime <laughs> crime <laughs> just an absolute crime I, I mean uh, the, yeah the, the land there is is more valuable to NASCAR to sell land that's California uh, but uh, yeah it's just a crime and uh, the poor Californians uh, that, that want to have a oval racing super speedway that in, in their area they had Ontario that got taken down now they had Fontana that got taken down Riverside which is a road course that's that's no longer there um, so, you know, good luck to, you know, any big wheel racing uh, in the uh, in the SoCal area other than the, the, the Grand Prix at uh, Long Beach. And I don't see that going anywhere anytime soon. But that short track that they're building out there, I think it's going to be great for NASCAR. It will be great for NASCAR. You, It's just too short and it's not configured at all for Indy cars. You, you will never see Indy car go there. But, you know, NASCAR, if uh, it's, it's their facility, so they can do whatever they want. Um, uh, it's just, just a bit of a crime, I think. And I think IndyCar did a little bit of that to themselves, too, by not going to, quit going to Pocono. And I think they had quit going to Fontana, too, right? Yeah, they stopped going to Fontana after um, it, it was a great race. Uh, but uh, IndyCar, um, as of late, is, and it really since the um, uh, Dan Weldon incident at Las Vegas, has been kind of adverse to pack racing. Um, even though the, there, there was still plenty of pack racing at Texas when they were there, they had a, a 2015 race at California that was just super pack racing. It was a great race. It's on YouTube. You should check it out. Uh, but the drivers were just scared out of their minds because they, they could never break away, uh, very much like a stock car at one of the, the plate tracks. Uh, and they never uh, renewed to go back there. And then, of course, two big accidents happened here that uh, really, uh, the, the, the big one paralyzed Robert Wickens um, in turn two. In fact, there were two big wrecks at turn two in two consecutive years, and then IndyCar decided not to come back here. They claim safety, and I, and I believe whatever safety needs to be fixed here at the facility will be fixed if for IndyCar to come back. But I think IndyCar can come back. Um, but uh, I, I think a lot of those, those wrecks in turn two were just dumb moves on driver's parts. Uh, certainly one was a real dumb move by uh, Takuma Sato, and he got uh, penalized for it. Came back the next race at Gateway to win it and kind of make up for it a little bit, but he destroyed a ton of equipment in turn two in that particular race. And then, you know, Robert Wickens is just now kind of starting to gain some feeling back in his lower extremities. 
maybe might try to race an IndyCar or run an IndyCar maybe for some laps at Indianapolis, but he was an up and coming star in the IndyCar series at the time. And I think just, a, and on top of that, there's there was the incident that included Justin Wilson um, catching a piece of equipment off a crash in turn two. I think it was Sage Karam uh, got in the wall in turn two. One of his wheel shafts got loose, bounced around on the track, hit Justin Wilson. And unfortunately it was a, a, a critical hit and uh, he passed away because of the injury. And so there's a lot of, just a lot of bad memories for drivers and owners here at Pocono. I do see them coming back. I just don't know when. I just hope soon. And I'm not really familiar with these open wheel cars, but is there a lot more they can do in terms of safety? I know that they've kind of put a cockpit in these cars and, and kind of covered the guy's head and, and whatnot, but how much can be done for safety? I mean, an open wheel car, these cars wreck like this at an oval. They're, they're going to get air. Yeah, the... the um I think if uh, if Justin had the the arrow screen, um, I think it probably would have helped. I think it definitely would have helped. Uh, and here comes uh, Brophy. Look, by the way, he's caught up this lead group, and he is. I told you, he's not wasting time. <laughs> oh, Frankenfeld pulls down right in front of him. <laughs> uh, but uh, they're constantly trying to improve uh, safety on these cars. I think these cars, when it comes to the aero screen uh, are pretty maxed out and Frankenfeld coming to pit road by the way they're kind of maxed out on uh, uh, on what they could really do this because these cars they, they've been around since 2012 these are the DW12s you're looking at they have the 2018 IR18 aero kit on them that's what you see here uh, so these cars have been around for 12 years at least the tubs have and they're talking about a whole new car coming up for possibly I think they said 2027 so there's going to be things that they're going to put into that car that are going to be even more improvement on safety over even these cars right now. Um, you'll probably see stronger tethers on the tires. Uh, you'll probably definitely see the aero screen back. Uh, you'll probably see lighter weight but stronger materials help, help protecting these drivers. Um, a number of things uh, that I think they can still do to uh, make these cars a lot better. And that the, the history of safety improvements in any car has always been an ongoing thing. Every iteration of the car gets safer and safer and safer. Unfortunately, there's always going to be fatalities in IndyCar racing or any type of racing for that matter. But as these cars get up, you go look back in the 50s and there were fatalities all over the place. The 60s, there were fatalities, but not as many. The 70s, there were fatalities, not as many. As we're getting into the 2000s, the 2010s, the 2020s, the fatalities, not as many as there were decades ago. So I, I think whatever iteration they do on the IndyCars going forward, it's going to be a safer vehicle for everybody. Here, we're coming to pit road. More, yeah, more stops here. It's crowded there on pit in there, and that's not a lot of room. Mark Murphy on pit road. We're at lap 68 of 200, just sitting here chatting about IndyCar history, 500-mile history, as we're in kind of in the dog days of the uh, – of the mid-race laps here at 500 mile races if you've ever been to an indy 500 really everybody's on their feet for like the first 10 laps and then after the first 10 laps everyone just kind of sits down and they break out the box lunches and the drinks and everything and they just kind of get settled in for that last 25 laps but uh pretty much what we got going on here pit stop down and away for mark murphy and he is done he's out there with mark stanley right behind him and they will have at least a little uh, drafting partner here to work with as they come back up to speed. Leaders are coming right with them. Panero up high. Leader now is Eric Troiano. He did pretty long in that first run. So I guess the racer that we're watching now, fellas, is Victor DePorto. Can he get to 80 laps this time without the aid of a caution? Well, he's certainly in the draft as Chris Samard right in front of him. He's not pushing the issue any with uh, Samard. Let me, uh, let's ride around with uh, Victor here. Fifth gear, just staying in the draft. I, uh, I'm very surprised, lads. So we're you know, coming up towards lap 70. There's eight cars that have uh, dropped out and we've only had one yellow. That is, you know, great, great uh, driving by all the boys out there at the moment to uh, just keep everything beautiful. Yeah, these guys are real pros at uh, keeping the cars off each other right now. Yeah, look at six gear with Del Porto. Lifts a little bit in the two. And just so everybody knows, that was Brant that said that. That's the commentator's curse. So <laughs> <laughs> Put the hand up now. 
sorry. <laughs> okay, there's some art. He's going to pit coming. road. And now Victor doesn't have anyone to really um, get the draft from. He, I think, I believe that's in front of him, Jared Rexine. So he is, uh, what's the difference distance to Rexine? 9.9. .9. So he's in the draft envelope, but he's not uh, in the, uh, he's at the tail end of it. Draft envelope of these cars extends about a second and a half. Here we see Brophy to the inside of a car up there. That is uh, Troiano, I think. Yeah, that was Troiano. Gets around him. So Mer Brophy trying just to pass everything and anything and just move on as fast as he can. So another nine laps, another eight laps, possibly, when we expect uh, Del Porto possibly to hit pit road. Triano's your leader, Del Porto second, Rexing third as he's on pit road. Butch Davis will pick up the position here momentarily. Frankenfeld will also move up a spot here once they all reach the front straightaway. Jason Brophy right now is only about four to five seconds behind this group that will be the leaders here after pit stop cycle through. So that is about three seconds net gained over that pit cycle. So if he gains three seconds on the next pit cycle, he will He'll be pretty close to that draft envelope you're talking about. Jared Rexing with the purple lap so far, the 41-1. Now, what did I say? How many fuel runs on Brophy to get back up to the front? Gary? You said two? Two. And Chris is on the money. The next fuel run he should be back up the front. Just to put the commentator's curse on him as well now <laughs> as the rest of the field. <laughs> Troiano on pit road. Troiano is a teammate of uh, Tel Porto. That, that, that's a, it's a super Brazilian team. I've seen other uh, of their teammates in Indy Fix before. They are, they are a stout squad. And Del Porto, who had the leaders right in front of him, basically on the main straight, hits pit road. Getting down to that just crawling speed of 45 degrees. Uh, 45 degrees, 45 miles per hour, sorry. He's uh, heading down pit road, will hit his spot. The cars use pneumatic jacks. They'll shoot out from underneath the car, put the car up in the air just enough so the uh, tire handlers can get those tires off. Single impact lug in the middle. I will smack those on, let down the air, fill up the, tire, fill up the tank. And away he goes. Good stop for him. In the pit for 10 seconds on pit road for 44.85. So not one of the shortest stops, but look where he's popped out. He's right there with the leaders. He's in P6. So Del Porto. Continuing his march, not quite to 80 laps. Got it to, uh, officially, we're going to show him pitting on 74. And I don't think it's going to take this run here. Jason Brophy is, he's in this envelope here. He is back with these leaders. He's done a great job after the pit stop here. Yeah, he is on the lead lap again. He's made his way back to the lead lap. He is currently 14th. And uh, we, we called it here right in the booth. We said, do not sleep on this man. He might be in a green car, but that doesn't mean anything. These team high private, la private label guys, they, they plan for everything. 3.4 seconds off the lead. I mean, it, it is still a, a fair way, but uh, he's right up there. Yeah, he's got the, like, that's a line of cars in front of him. He's in there. He's, he's with, like we like to say at Daytona or Talladega on the stock car side, he's with the main pack. I think what happened there, too, a few laps ago, I, I don't know if you guys caught it, they almost wrecked up here in this main pack. They got three wide, nearly four wide, one time off of three, and there was a lot of checking up going on. And I think uh, Jason Brophy was smelling blood in the water when he saw that. Yeah, they spread themselves to get through the corner and get out of the dirty air, and uh, it was all just right at the last second for all of them, and it, it did look a little bit messy. And uh, I think four wide might be generous. They looked like they were five <laughs> wide. They were spread everywhere. It has been a while since we've seen a, a real IndyCar driver uh, win two 500-mile races in the same season. 
Uh, the last to do that actually was Juan Montoya in 2000, and he won in two different cars in two different series. Of course, he won the Indy 500, and then he won the Michigan 500 in kart that year. So that's pretty amazing. You can win two 500-mile races in two entirely different cars. Well, he won a lot of races too, right? Oh, yeah, two-time Indy 500 winner, uh, won the kart championship, rookie of the year. Yeah. Won a couple on the uh, on the NASCAR level as well. I, I think I don't think that he was widely appreciated though at the NASCAR level, a type of talent that they had in their ranks with him. And they just kind of looked at him as kind of a, a IndyCar guy that kind of was on the road course a road course ringer ish guy that drove for Chip Ganassi and was kind of lucky to be driving for Chip Ganassi. It, I don't think really people appreciated the the talent that uh, they were watching when they were watching Juan Pablo. Yeah, and speaking as a fan in that time, it. You know, he didn't really excel at the Ovals. He seemed to really struggle at the Ovals. But I heard him talk about it after he retired in racing. He talked about how difficult NASCAR was over the other forms because at that time, NASCAR was all about the driver. It wasn't so much about the car like you saw in some other series. And mm -hmm. he really enjoyed that aspect of where, you know, if you were a good driver, you were going to go somewhere even if you were in a bad car. Now, Chris, you're a... A big uh, NASCAR man. How do you how do you see uh, my Kiwi cousin across the uh, the channel there, Shane Van Gisbergen, <laughs> going in the uh, NASCARs this year, mate? Well, we'll have to wait and see when we get to some ovals. I know he's uh, he's jumped in with both feet. Daytona started a little rough with the Arca race and not getting in, but then they ultimately got into the race, got wrecked early. Got a good finish in the Xfinity race at Daytona, but we'll, we'll see what happens when they get to the bread and butter. I thought he did pretty decent in that truck race at IRP last year, so I'm, I'm really curious to see what he's going to do at some of these cookie-cutter tracks. And We know he's going to be a threat at the road courses. We know he's going to be really good there. He's in really good equipment. Justin Marks and Pitbull are doing everything top-notch over there at Trackhouse, so it's, it's an exciting time here for, for guys coming in and the next-gen car obviously being close to what he's driven before in the V8 supercar, so... It, should be fun. Hey, speaking yeah, of tracks, uh, real quick, let's uh, let's talk about Worldwide Technology Raceway, shall we? <laughs> Worldwide Technology Raceway is a motorsport racing facility in Madison, Illinois, just east of St. Louis, Missouri. Close to the Gateway Arch, it features a 1.25-mile oval that hosts the NASCAR Cup Series, Craftsman Truck Series, and the NTT IndyCar Series. It also includes a two-mile infield road course used by Speed Tour, Trans Am, SCCA, and the Porsche Club of America, and features a quarter-mile NHRA-sanctioned drag strip that hosts the annual NHR Campy World Drag, drag Racing Series, a Midwest Nationals event. There's a foul for you. And, of course, if you like karting, it has the Kart Plex state-of-the-art karting facility. Check out Worldwide Technology Raceway on the web. Uh, their URL should be in the description. There are proud sponsors here of... The Warriors. Oh, we got one on the wall here. Yes, we do. See it right there. That is A.J. Hobson, I believe. Is that A.J. Hobson? Trying to find who it is now. I don't think it was A.J. Hobson. Oh, it is uh, Michael Hosek. Michael Hosek in the, uh, in the blue compass car. He hit the wall. And kudos to him for keeping it up there. He didn't try to jerk it off that wall and wreck the yeah, leaders. Yeah, that was a, a good etiquette and car control on his part because he could have pulled it right down and taken out about four or five cars right around him. Now, we want to thank uh, Raceway, uh, or excuse me, uh, Worldwide Technology Raceway for their sponsorship of the Warriors for Peace IndyCar Series and ERL. Well, this is summer for them, right? They got a lot of races coming up. Oh yeah, they're they're they are a busy facility. They they're the only ones that that host. Uh, IndyCar, NASCAR, and NHRA. So go get your tickets now. You know, yeah. go get them now and uh, tell them we sent you. Lots of uh, lots of events, and it's great location as well. Yeah, that Barmerito, uh, that that Barmerito group that uh, promotes the IndyCar race there in the fall is. They have made that like a race really worth going to. They got packed grandstands there, and, and it, everyone's excited for that race. So a good on uh, it's it's good to have a good promoter of IndyCar racing that uh, that always helps get more people in the stands. Butch Davis, your leader, Fred, Chad Frankenfeld, the pole center P2, Mark Murphy P3, Eric Troiano P4, Ethan Stanley up 13 spots. He's in P5. Panero, well he just swapped. Uh, Panero going to pit road. This is a scheduled stop for Panero. 
So he's coming in again. This is now lap 83 to 84. So he just did 30 laps. So he's doing 30 lap stints now, pretty much on the nose. His previous previous uh, stint, stint two, was 29 laps. So he is uh, mathematically working this. It's going to be his third stop. He's stopped early on all three of his stops. So theor theoretically, he should have about a three-lap buffer at the end if he has been over 30 laps, right? Yeah, he should have. He a, go three, right? Yeah, he should be his last stop at 170, and he should be good to go. Should be good to go. And he's going to pop out in front of the leaders here. So let's reset the field here. We just had someone pit here. It's Davis 1, Frankenfield 2, Murphy 3, Troiano 4, Stanley 5, Sudik 6, Rexine 7, Bill Porto 8, Samard 9, Brophy back up to 10th after a bit of a gaffe on his first pit road visit. He got down a lap. He has now fought his way back up to 10th. And he should be pitting here soon as well. He's been pitting about when Adriano does. Yeah, his uh, last stop, uh, he was also 30 laps. He's currently 30 laps into his current stint now, so do we see him make this turn down to pit road? Staying high in three and four, or three, excuse me. Nope, not coming down pit road, so he's gonna go a little bit deeper this time. Last stop on 55. He'll be pitting yeah, this Brophy, time. Brophy has to go in because he needs to sit on Panero's uh, rear wing so that they can um, keep themselves away from the leaders, because otherwise the leaders will catch them back up again and keep losing all that time. Well, it's going to be, it's going to take a really good in and out if he's going to get all the way to Panero right here. He was about three seconds behind. So he would have to really have a great pit road run here. Not that he can't, but after wrecking on the first here try, comes. he might be able to Here it comes. Hesitant. Here it comes. Pit, pit, pit. Box, box, box. Yep. Here he comes. Get to, the, and he, in plenty of time. Yeah, those, uh, yes, those cones here at this track sneak up on you really fast and in comparison if you go to indianapolis for the indycar oval not the nascar oval but the indycar oval the nascar ovals they actually have the cones in a similar position right there at entry of pit road indycar oval they're set further down pit road so you could come in pit road really hot and then slow down at the last second you can't do that here so that's just something that we get used to when we run Indianapolis and then we come and see these other tracks. It doesn't operate that way for us. So down and away, Brophy, good stop. 10.3 in the box. 44.82 on pit road. And there goes Panero. And he catch Panero. And another thing that's difficult here, too, is you're kind of pitting blind off a of three. Now, you know where it is. All these guys are great drivers. This isn't their first pit road. This isn't the first time at Pocono. But it's still unique every time where you are you just kind of have a mark that you're at in the middle of turn yeah. three where you're yeah. starting to slow down. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And I'll get the pit strategy off the screen here for everybody. Uh, but uh, currently watching uh, this battle here with Pinero and uh, Brophy in the, in the time. So uh, Brophy's uh, just outside of the of the draft. He's in it now. He's in it now. There he goes. 1.4. So he's going to start feeling the effects of the draft as he goes down the long pond straight. Uh, but uh, yeah, you, you are right. And this is this is actually one of the best tracks ever in the whole sim, at least oval tracks that I can think of in an IndyCar that if you have VR, it really pays dividends because when you go into turn one here on a monitor, you can't see everything. Right, you can't see the exit of one if there's a wreck. You can hear about it, but you can't see it. If you have VR, you can turn your head and you can see that. And the same thing here when you're pitting on off of turn three on VR, you can turn and look and see the pits as you're coming around that big long turn three arcing turn, like uh, modeled after uh, Milwaukee. You can turn your head and see, and that kind of helps. But again, not everybody that has VR, and a lot of people swear by the three monitors, and other people swear by the VR. VR does bring in a whole other piece of hardware limitations that sometimes could fail on you, and I've had that happen to me before. So, <laughs> I'm a, I'm a triples guy, and I've got the triple twenty sevens, and with a great view, I have a VR set as well. And uh, the problem is, two laps in, it uh, I get the motion sickness in VR, oh. so I just can't run it. But the the visuals, VR is anyone who thinks that triples is got better visuals than VR is. You know, clearly didn't set it up right because VR is unbelievable. The, the 3D vision you get yeah. is phenomenal. 
It is. And, you can, and on road courses, oh, it, it really helped me on road course. I'm not the greatest road course driver, but it helps you see the apex. And here's Brophy on Panero, and he's making the move. This is for position. 18th and 19th, he pulls it off. But yeah, now he has no one working together. Yeah, now they're going to work together because I, Panero didn't want to lead. He let him go. So Panero's just going to sit here and ride. I don't think Murphy, I don't think Brophy really wanted that. Well, now maybe he cracked the throttle a little bit. Well, I think right here, I, I believe in the open wheel stuff here, you want to kind of swap like that to to help everybody go faster because you can't push on each other like you can in the stock car. No, 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 no. You, Rubin is not racing here. <laughs> yeah, in the stock car, you just come off a of turn three and give that guy a big pow and speed both of you up. Yeah, that's not going to happen. Yeah, they could be doing the uh, swap drafting. Um, I was thinking with the way that his short stopping is that maybe Panero might be still in a little bit of fuel mode conservation. We know that Brophy's not, and he'll he'll want to go, go, go. Uh, but um, yeah, maybe they'll play with each other here. And then the leaders well, right behind him. 41-4 for them. And the leaders are running 41-9, so they beat the they beat the field by half a second. Yeah. Jared Rexy still has a purple lap, by the way, with a 41-1. And uh, if someone brings up a, a browser here, I can give you uh, an actual speed on that. So, yeah, I think they are definitely working together, running lap times that yeah. quicker than everybody else. And they're, they're being smart, right? So they're just changing as through each corner, which keeps the maximum speed up. The other one drops in, and, you know, you can see in their times, they're running 41-1-2, 41-1-3. And um, the, the guys in the others are just a 41-3 a little bit behind. And these guys are slowly, slowly. Yeah, these are, the gap, so. these are 218 mile per hour laps right here. We're watching right yeah. now. And uh, not a great exit for Brophy. He gets off and he's now back up. The, the draft is the, the great uh, equalizer. Uh, but uh, at Rexing's speed of a 41-1 is a 218.9, 218.9 miles per hour. If, uh, anyone was curious about that I always argue that uh, when it comes to us us racers we, you know we, we know what the time is on the on the speed but uh, those average person watching at home like what's a 41 one what's that come out to and on oval racing I always say that people really care about miles per hour and on road courses that's where most people care about time but most of us if they're if we're just regular I racing veterans we, we could make the translation of time in our head but uh, just those of you that are watching, if you're not sure what a 41.1 is, it's 218.9. And what we're seeing right here is it being executed masterful, masterfully between Jason and Adriano right here. These two working together like this, purposely leaving the other guy with clean air so they can each get the run down the straightaway, do what they need to do. And I, I think this is going to force the hand of some of these guys up front yeah. to try to either get, get, the, get together and get to working together. Or try to jump on their pitch strategy so they can stay with these guys because you can't keep getting beat half a second a lap. Yeah, I think uh, if they, you take their I ratings and you and you add them together, I think they're in the eight thousands. These two guys. So uh, I mean, you're looking at four no, K drivers Brophy's on the oval. 000. What's Brophy that? Is 6, He's six thousand. He's six thousand. And Panero is actually seven point one. Yeah, I knew it was up there. I knew I knew they were definitely more than four K each. But yeah, they are way up there. They are real pros. Uh, I don't. Well, I don't have the, the I ratings showing on my overlay. So uh, I just knew they were at least three. It. I knew they were both at least three thousand. Three thousand is like the the magic number if you know someone that or four thousand that that are really really good. Don't worry, I've got you, Gary. It's uh, he's a seven point one, which puts him just about into the um, you know the pro elite yeah. category. Right. If you look at say Max Verstappen, he's he's plus ten k in the road racing world. Uh, I th actually, I think he's just gone through 11k. Oof. You know, there's only like three people above 11,000. Um, Panero is is getting up there in into the top. Well, he's already in the top one percent for sure. But uh, Brophy's not far behind him, and you can see the way they're they're driving here. And the gap is coming down. It was 37 seconds just, you know, five to ten laps ago. It's now down to 34 seconds. So by the time they cycle through they will be at the front of the field. Yeah, and if we they have a gap, they'll keep working together and just keep increasing. Somebody's going to have to do something here. Yeah. Um, I know Chad is not happy right now on the radio. I heard him saying a little bit of things about they got to work together or else none of them are going to win. So, yeah. 
Yeah, he can see. Beat, uh, he can see the uh, the long, the, the 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 long. Ooh, Butch to the inside. Chad even more to the inside. That is not super smooth plan, but he pulls it off. Yeah, Chad is looking uh, at the uh, the long, the long term here. Oh, wow, Butch wanted to the inside. Are we hitting pit road here? Is that why we're trying to fight to the inside? Yes, that's exactly why we're fighting to the inside. So both uh, uh, Butch and Chad in at lap uh, 98, coming to 99. 33 laps for Frankenfeld on this stint. 30 laps for Butch Davis on this stint. This is their third stop for each one of them. Another uh, probably th two to three more to go, depending on uh, mileage. What will oh. be interesting here is the gap that they're going to be behind Adriano and, and Jason. Jason Brophy. Yep, and that's what we're going to watch here. We're going to watch Brophy and Panero now on the main straight. They're going to pass them. There they come. Oh, they're going to be way out there, too, already running that pace. Chad and Butch are going to have to work together here real quick and in a hurry, or else they're going to watch this win disappear. I shouldn't say win, a chance to win disappear. Butch has wasted no time. He's to the inside. He says, follow me. Right on through. On the tunnel turn, single file. Exit right off the wall, about a half a car width off the wall. Down the straight. And they'll should be fully up to speed by the time they get to turn one. Maximum downforce in effect there. And see if they can start reeling in top two. More pit stops occurring in the background. Now the only way they're going to do it is if they work together. We'll have to see if they're willing to work together. So far, so good. It looks like they're swapping from the same spots that Adriano and Jason are. But let's, uh, maybe we can help. Let's bring up the battle box with these guys. There you go. And let's put the 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 uh, camera on Panero. Or, or uh, Butch Davis. There we go. Oh, we got, we got a lap car in the way, so that's kind of what's throwing off. So let's go back to... Uh, And narrow and we should get a battle box of what the battle for position here this is a ultimately a battle for eighth ninth tenth and eleventh uh, between these two cars and the two cars you just saw coming off of a uh, corner one they were exactly three seconds back just about the line last time we'll see if that can stabilize they can gain a little bit because if they just figure out a way to gain for a few laps in a row they might get inside that window you know and pick up the draft of those front two all right, looks like Murph has made it uh, back on his pit stop with Chad. So that's going to be helpful for Chad. That's a battle uh, that, that's going to at least be between teammates there. And uh, you know that uh, Murph is going to work with Chad on this one. So that is a battle for position in the battle box. Brophy, Frankenfeld, Davis, Murphy right there. You see the battle between these three and the Brophy is 3.66 seconds. They got to work. Yeah, I was going to say hard. they lost time. Yeah, they got to work hard. Even swapping, they're, they're losing time. The other thing to consider for these guys is how much fuel they're using trying to uh, bridge this gap. Oh, they're full rich. They got to be full rich. Yep. And when I say so full rich, that's rich. engine map one. That's engine map one. Yep. So that, that's, you know, Panero, who would have mapped his out to exactly 30 laps, is probably going, I can only do this for so long. He, well, he might, he might be engine map uh, uh, one as well, but... You know he's stopping earlier than everyone, so he's he's working on more of a pit stop strategy and less of a fuel strategy. Does that makes sense. He's stopping on he's stopping on certain laps, whereas he's not stopping when the tank's dry. Yeah, I think I think Jason and Adriano are both well inside their window to be able to run pretty much full the rest of the race. Whereas you saw it with Chad here, and and when he and Butch da uh, Butch Davis pitted there. It was before lap 100, so they can't just go out here and go full song. So uh, let's uh, let's take a look at this. So um, we got the camera on Brophy right now. So Brophy uh, pitted at lap 87. He went 32 laps. So uh, 87. He's 17 laps by my count. Yeah, he's 17 laps into his current stint. 
Yeah. So, um... Interestingly, uh, I can't see Panero's uh, on the app, but I can see Brophy. He was two laps, I'm pretty sure he was, because we spoke and said he needed, Brophy needed to come in. Yeah, they're still looking at uh, three more stops. So the gap now, Brophy, I'm showing, is 32 seconds. That's five seconds on this run they have taken off the leaders. And they were 3.4 seconds behind when they came into the pits. That puts them a couple of seconds in front. Yeah, and we got Victor and Eric out there. Victor, of course, has been the, the fuel guy tonight, being able to go the furthest every pit stop. Yeah, and let's, uh, both these guys with, uh, they're on the same team. These are teammates with uh, Benaporto Race, Benaporto Pro Racing. These are teammates. Uh, they both have now. gone the longest. Now, here comes uh, Eric. So Victor is now going to take over. Now, Victor last time went 34 laps on his uh, last stint. So he is hitting on, uh, going to hit 34 this time by on is 33 right now. Is he going to eliminate the pit stop right here? Can he, is he in the window to to pit the same amount as everybody else with the huge gap right here? Yeah, I'm going to do the math as soon as, he do, as soon as we find out for sure. But he might be down to now what, two stops after this. Go? Yeah, yeah, 94. He, theoretically, based on the lap time, Victor might be the guy here. He's, he's so, not, not necessarily got Rexing, Rexing behind him. Sorry, he's got Rexing behind him. Not pushing very hard because Rexing's running up on him. Rexing's going to pit with him. So he's pitting. Slows down. Good job. Uh, he's going to pit coming to 34 on lap 107. So they're kind of got 107 for his pit stop. So he went 33. Is that what the calculator is going to credit him with? Okay. So that puts him pitting at 140 and 173, and he's done. Two stops. So the gap now from uh, Brophy and Panero to Frankenfield is five seconds. It, wow. in the, it was in three the seconds after five the seconds. Stop. Yeah. Yep. So that's two seconds they've gained just since Chad has pitted. That's incredible. Here comes uh, Del Porto and Rexine. Going to come out right with the leaders. No, they're not the leaders, though, but this is a lead pack, though. Our second lead pack. Stop right here, too. Like, that would be incredible if they're able to make one less stop than everybody and have a huge lead. It'd be interesting to see whether they're actually switching maps. So uh, when they're in the overtake mode, put it into into one. And when Panero comes past Brophy here, you know, does he drop it into seven for the straight uh, and vice versa just to try and manage that fuel run? So the, the engine mapping on Indy cars, it's one through five is actual fuel. So a full lean is, is full race lean is five. Under caution, you go to eight. Um, six and seven are more of a, of, of a way how your throttle reacts on a linear basis. And you see more people on six and seven. It's six and seven are full rich, but it's it's... It's more for road courses, so you don't really use a six or seven on a super speedway. You're most of the time one through five and then eight under caution. So it's possible, it is possible that when one gets to the lead and you're gonna have those mapped as wheels or something very easily on your on your wheel, on your steering wheel, um, I, I have a uh, as a, as a thumb encoder on mine uh, that I could really quickly go from one to two and save a little bit on, on the precious drops while someone's drafting off me trying to save, they pass me and they go one, then I can go back up to one and then pass them, and then we can do this, but I'm switching on between one and two the whole time, or three, or two and three the whole time, depending on what I'm doing. But Brophy's your leader, so sure he made it all the way up to the yeah. front. <laughs> the last few laps, the last few laps is 0.4 to 0.5 difference from Panero Brophy through to Frankenfield Davis Troiano. They're, they're literally half a second behind every single lap at the moment. Yeah, I think the only way Jason and Adriano lose this race is if somehow Victor can do it on one less stop. Victor and Jared can, and maybe even Eric can do it on one less stop. That's the only way I foresee them losing this race if it stays green. So let me just break out the uh, the old spotters calculator here. Um, Panero and Brophy, they're, they're getting ready to stop here real soon, as a matter of fact. So um, they went 30. Let's take Brophy, for instance, 87. They pitted on 87. 
He's, let's say he does 32. That puts him at 119, which is going to be in the next seven laps or so. If he does another 32 after that, that brings him to 151 plus 32. Another after that, a 183. So he's there got two stops to go still. I think most everyone has two stops, but I think the one that can go deeper on a shorter fill and that saves time on short fills save time might be that Dorporto stop. We'll see. We'll see how much time they save in the pit pit road. A cut, you know, a second, as they say, in IndyCar is a, you know, every second saved is a rate as a uh, football field on the racetrack. Do you see All the leaders at the moment? It's yep. just that margin just keep getting bigger and bigger. And oh, I know Chad will be seething underneath that helmet, watching these guys pull away from him, and he can't do anything about it. Give you an idea of what uh, speeds are inside the cockpit here for Brophy. 223, 224, 225, 226. Into turn two. Now he doesn't it's have interesting a draft. that uh, you guys talk about uh, miles per hour, uh, you know, on a lap. Uh, for us in, in Australia, we don't talk kilometers uh, in any racing whatsoever. Everything is, is all about time for us. So. When somebody says 41 seconds, even in sprint cars, which is, uh, you know, you guys race sprint cars a lot in, in mm -hmm. America, we still deal in 13-second laps, 14-second laps, whatever it may be. It really is very different between the two countries. Well, I will say this. Over here in America on the stock car side and, and the sprint car side, we, we break down the seconds as well. It's, I think the open-wheel side and some of that... F1 side, that's where it gets more into the miles per hour and, and whatnot. Well, the, uh, the, the F1 side is definitely in, uh, in the time, that's for sure. And I, I know that uh, for the longest time, NASCAR was in the time, um, but then they started kind of doing uh, second, uh, uh, excuse me, in the speed, but then NASCAR started doing time as well. IndyCar will do definitely 100% do time on road courses. Uh, because you'll you'll see you'll see a lap at 100 miles per hour at Long Beach, and you're like, eh, that's nothing. I can do 100 miles per hour in my car. Not very impressive. So uh, we just saw Panero complete a pit stop. He should have uh, 144 plus. Let me do this here again. So I'm showing only 28 laps for Brophy on that run. I'm well, showing two more stops for. Uh, and Brophy's Panero. had some kind of. Has he had an issue, or is he just putting the next lap? He is he pit in pit road, and yep. he is 9.8 in the box, which doesn't seem too out of the ordinary. So he and is coming, and here comes, and he's going to come out ahead of him. And I'll give you a readout between the two of these on pit road. Brophy was actually longer on pit in his box. So here's the breakdown of uh, how they were on uh, pit road as we're um, watching these two. 44.37 uh, on pit road for Brophy, 9.8 in the box. Uh, Panero, 43.63 on pit road, 9.6 in the box. So actually, Panero was quicker all around that time on those stops, in the box and on pit road. Yeah, and they found each other. They're going to work together again, just like they did that first run. So They're very wise to do that. <laughs> They're very wise to do that. And now they're in a good spot. They might start getting a tow off of some of the traffic out in front of them. Yeah, they do have, but in front of them... They're down in uh, 18th and 19th at the moment. 17th place, Corey Johnson. Let's go get the camera on Corey there. There's Corey. They are about four seconds behind him. And if they catch him, now Corey last pitted. He's 19 laps into his current stint, uh, went 29 his last time. If they can catch him, they will definitely get benefit of his draft. Although I'm not sure they'll, they'll get much benefit because he might just pit a, a lap or so. Uh, after they really get up to them. We'll see. We'll see. They're a lot closer than I thought they were. Now, well, they're still 4.2 seconds behind. But that is a gaggle of race cars right there who are all running in dirty here. They should be making pretty good lap time over those guys here. We'll see this next lap. And then also involved here is Michael Hossack, who was involved in at least two incidents. We saw at the get into the wall and the long, long pond straight. Just kept it in the wall, allowed people on bite, so he wisely... Did not yank the wheel and bring it down and take out about five cars. And then I believe he was also involved in that turn two or turn one lap two incident that took out a number of cars very early on, including last week's winner. Now, Chris, uh, clearly 
the commentator's curse didn't work. Oh, have a look at that. There, Samard on Samard against the wall, and there's a caution at lap 119, and that's going to pull everyone together. Samard's a right front is smacked out of alignment, and we will find out what happened here. Now, here, does Brophy and Panero come back in again? They're leading when they... Oh, actually, no, they're, they're actually behind, so they probably won't. Uh, oh, so we go three wide. We're watching the replay right now. Three wide. Samard into Frankenfeld. Just dicey racing there. And day done by Chris for Chris Samard, unfortunately. Bummer. Does Chad's car look all right? Yeah, they just made a little side-to-side -side contact there. So Frankenfield did make contact, and when they went three wide in the three, you can't really do that necessarily. I was about to say maybe Chris needs to mention the um, commentator's curse because it didn't work <laughs> for me 40 laps later. And I'm about to ask Chris, and wacko, we get the yellow. Great job, Chris. We'll put that one down to you. We'll see who hits pit Is road, it? but uh, momentarily wanted to thank the uh, Warriors for Peace, Warriors for Peace of the Foundation, promoting peaceful change in the world to honor the beautiful life of Jack Shockley. Check out warriorsforpeace.org for more information. We want to thank them for sponsoring the Elite Racing League IndyCar Series. Hitting pit road right now, Chad Frankville, Butch Davis, Mark DeMurphy, everybody coming down pit road. And we are going to see if that includes Panero and Brophy, and it's going to include Brophy. Panero is banking on track position here, boys. If it was anybody else, I'd say, I don't know about that. But it's Adriano. Yeah, they, um, it was only a couple of laps you know, that they had been in. So it's questionable whether you come back in and get that refill and get back on the same strategy now that they had bridged that gap or, or do you, you know, stay out there and... Well, and they do have extra ticket. They, they, do, they do have extra tires in the, in the, in pit road that they, if he wanted to slap on a new set, if he thought that new tires were going to be that beneficial. Immediately behind the pace car is Michael Hasek. Michael is going to get, uh, actually, he might, if he doesn't pit this time around, because all the cars on the lead lap uh, got a chance to pit here, uh, we'll see if he gets the waiver on. I'll explain that rule if that situation arises, but uh, right now we'll see if he pits, but uh, Panero is your leader. Frankenfeld came out uh, as uh, comes on, pit road comes out first. Goes on, comes in first, comes out first. Butch Davis is P3. Mark Murphy, P4. Troiano, P5. Sudik, P6. Stanley, P7. Tyler Fody very quietly worked his way up to eighth. Good on him. Kevin Hayes, we talked about him at one point with a shout out. He was up uh, uh, many positions. Uh, he's up six right now. He's up to ninth. Del Porto, we've been watching him all day in 10th. AJ Hobson there in that uh, Danny Sullivan 80s throwback. Uh, in 11th, Joseph Morales, uh, who is still uh, kind of soldiering on as he uh, missed or kind of was involved, but uh, not as heavily damaged in that uh, turn two, lap one or lap two incident. Uh, Mark Wabellis right there in P13. Alan Stover in the, uh, the old, kind of the Pinsky looking uh, uh, Marlboro car throwback there in P14. Corey Johnson, P15. Jared Rexon, 16th. Uh, J Justin uh, Miello, I hope I said it again right, he's on pit road for his uh, pit stop. Uh, he is currently 17th. Brophy catching up to the field now. Uh, he is in 18th. And Chris Samard is uh, the victim of uh, the last or the current caution, and he is uh, currently under repair, classified in 19th. We are 121 into this. We're getting to where at the period of the race that uh, we, we would call uh, back in the 80s in the IndyCar days watching 500 miles, the uh, the uh, Rick Mears portion of the race where all of a sudden he just comes out of nowhere and wins it. Uh, we're about in that window right here. Not quite, but uh, we've got an exciting race ahead of us with Panero, Frankenfield, and Davis uh, all uh, amongst the leaders all day long, but on a slightly different pit strategy Panero's been. 
Yeah, and we see obviously Brophy coming back in to uh, keep trying to get repairs and go back out again. Um, wondering how much damage he's actually got. If he's had a lot of damage, it's a miracle that he's been able to maintain pace uh, as much as he had. I don't know what he's got going on. He could just be sitting there kind of the engine off. I don't know. Well, let's pop in. Let's take a look on... Uh... No, he's going. It's This is two laps now, or maybe three. He's come in and uh, either getting repair or just sitting there and, and yeah. off he goes again. I, I thought sure. he, I must have missed something and he he got damaged somewhere. But uh, if you've not seen it and I've not seen it, what is he doing? So obviously he's going to catch them back up here at, at the end of this lap. Uh, and I see uh, Mark Rabalis has been given a EOL. Yeah, he uh, the rule is three pit boxes in, three pit boxes out. Uh, he drove through five or six on okay. the way out. Yeah, that's... <laughs> Yeah, it is a, a common rule in a lot of leagues. Uh, in official iRacing, uh, ra IndyCar racing uh, rules, you could you could roll through the entire pit road, pit lane uh, of your opponents uh, and not get penalized. But uh, league racing, they like to see a little bit more organization. Three and three off is uh, this league's rule. I've seen that in the Vore League and a couple other leagues. Uh, I like that rule. I do. I, I don't like the people that just kind of camp out there on the concrete uh, lane and roll to their stop. Where, I, where I'm trying to fight for position in the high-speed lane where I'm supposed to be. <laughs> but uh, let's ride along with Frankenfeld here on the restart. Uh, we're still a little ways to go. Reminder, this is a two-and-a-half-mile, three-turn triangle oval. About an hour north of Philadelphia. It's in the Pocono Hills. And one thing that Caution did right there, I don't know if he touched on this while I was uh, doing some admin stuff, that strategy killed the Victor Telporto. Yes, Caribbean it did. Strategy. It did. It absolutely did. Everybody's and they all pitted with the leaders, so they're all on the same strategy now. Coming to green, riding with our pull setter over his shoulder. Maybe, Here we maybe go. Chris can explain what Brophy has been doing the last uh, two or three laps. He's been coming in and just sitting in the pit box. Is he trying sure. to s sort fuel? And you know, he's he's taken a big hit to go to the back of the, the back of the pack and start all over again when he had a five second mm. lead so it's it's a bit strange maybe he was just tired of being around adriana <laughs> <laughs> we would like to ride with uh, chad there but he's blinking and he kept uh throwing the camera off so we're gonna ride with uh, butch davis who is uh has a run of the outside of panero off a of two kept it in there panero thought about coming up it's like uh-uh not gonna do it that would have been a better incident Chad is now your leader. Here comes Butch in the draft. Six gear. That's the passing gear. To the low side. Down the front straight. Five wide down the front straight in some cases. Four wide to this corner. Down to the yellow line. Lots of bumps. Car likes to float out to the wall. Sometimes that wall will reach out and grab you. He keeps it about a half a car off the wall. You want to also keep it, the car a little bit off the wall. Causes some drag. To the inside, Frankenfeld going to the three, uh, going to the two. Going to, you got to go through there pretty much single file. I do say that Chad's car blinking out is an advantage for him, though. That is that is an annoying advantage, um, and nothing against Chad. Um, it's just you never know when you get near that car where that car is going to rematerialize. Here we come, passing again on the main straight, down the front stretch in the turn one, modeled after. Trenton Speedway that got demolished in the early 80s. Good exit. The quiet exit. race has surely been Mark Murphy. Haven't heard much from him, and um, you know he's just sitting there. He's only half a second, half half a second off the lead. He's been uh, sitting pretty all race. Who do you think from here can win it? Anybody in the top 10, really. Um, Murph's had a great week. He. Uh, he won that Michigan race, that uh, the strength of field 4505 race, uh, where he beat some real high I rating people, uh, and he won that race. So he's on a bit of a high this week. He's about on a bit of a roll. Uh, we know Panero can easily win this thing. I know Butch Davis can win this thing. Chad, probably a little upset from what happened last week. He wants to win this thing. 
Troiano, I've seen him in the strength of field races that we covered on race first. We know he's fast. Nick Sudik, I know for a fact that he could win. He's, he's going to be fast. Ethan Stanley's been here all day long, and that's where you just need to be. You just need to put your car in position to win here at the end. You don't know what's going to happen in front of you. Stanley could all of a sudden be fifth place on one lap and leader the next, depending on what happens on the exit of one of these corners. Kevin Hayes has had a great race. Rexing's had a great race. Fody, we know, has the ability to get up there. Anybody in the top ten plus... Plus, Jason Brophy. <laughs> yeah, we can't leave him out. Um, it's interesting. So Mark, you know, decided to change his strategy. He's, he's putting more time into his Indy cars, and I think he's dropped off a fair bit of the um, NAS cars and stuff that he was doing, and looks to be paying dividends. He looks to be, you know, really ramping up his his um, his technique in the car, and it's paying dividends. Yeah, I, I say that uh, it, it's the more that you do reps in these cars, the better it does for you. The longer that you stay out of these cars and then you want to jump back in, it just it's not that easy. The more laps you do, wherever they are, doesn't matter. Road course, short oval, super speedway, intermediate track, street, street course, you know, whatever. The more laps you do in the car, period, helps you. And he's put a lot more laps in the car as of late. He's been wanting to kind of limit himself to the Indy cars. And that is rewarded in results. Because you have a good feel of the car. Yep, he's, um, for him, it's just really paid dividends in, in deciding to concentrate. And I I really like the luxury of iRacing of being able to go and go, you know what, I want to do a GT3 race this week. And it's very difficult to just stay connected to, to one car. But he's done it. And, uh, yeah, it's it's really going well for him. Well, that was a good time if, uh, if you're just joining us. This is ERN's coverage of the IndyCar1909.com 500 from Pocono Raceway. Your leader, well, right now, uh, is Butch Davis. Uh, we're at 129 of 200. Uh, we've had a heck of a battle. Different pit strategies have been developing. Uh, if you've, uh, you're liking what you see, make sure to leave a comment in chat. And uh, make sure to give us a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, ring the bell so you don't miss out on the next... Uh, ERN race. They have lots of them, all sorts of different disciplines. But you are watching IndyCars for the Warriors for Peace IndyCar series here. Thanks for joining us. We hope you're enjoying it. Butch Davis to the inside here on turn two called the tunnel turn because one of the main entrance to the track is underneath uh, the infield there is a tunnel pretty obvious <laughs> there used to be a very bad bump there back in the day and that's one of the reasons why the indy cars kind of stopped going here because kind of a boilerplate type bump there and they had boilerplate type walls that were very vicious and then when the uh, softer barrier the safer barriers came in here that helped out a lot I'm not sure there's anything safe about a concrete wall on your outside, Gary. No, no, no. But the, the, the safer <laughs> barriers do make survivability better. But uh, these used to be boil they used to actually be boilerplate steel walls and concrete. That's what it used to be back in the day. And, the, and when the Indy cars would hit them, even in the 80s, they would come to a dead stop almost immediately. And uh, if they didn't, they would just their, their job is to disintegrate parts anyways. But it was like, it was just an, an instant smash and explosion of parts. That's kind of what happened with the Indy cars. And not very safe. Um, there's a, re a, a video of a wreck, and I think it was in a 1980 Pocono 500. It certainly was with Johnny Rutherford. He was still driving the, uh, the Pennzoil Yellow Submarine. I think it was the 80 Pocono 500. He had a brake failure going in the one and just tore down the wall and tore his car in half, and he's lucky to walk away. Uh, but that's kind of what those uh, IndyCar drivers were facing in the early 80s when they came here. It's, it's, it is actually the norm, you know, to have a lot of concrete barriers and stuff around, the, you know, every single track, regardless of what racing you do. But you just wonder, you know, how safe that actually is. But, you know, you do get a, a fatality here or there, and it's never normally when they're surrounded by the concrete walls, there's always something else like a spa, right? It was that, that 
that turn going up the hill, uh, Mabu Rouge, yeah. which causes the issues. It's nothing to do with well, the, the concrete walls. The last, the last fatality here, as a matter of fact, had to do with a, a, a part of a car flying in a cockpit. Or any car. Yeah. Uh, I just noticed that Malello is the first one to drop into uh, the 40 seconds. So can you convert that over to miles for uh, the listeners? Yeah, is that a 40.961? Yeah, we'll do that. It's no point me trying to convert it to miles because <laughs> I only thought kilometers because then I've got to times it by 1.6 and all the rest of the stuff. 40.961? Okay, yeah. That is a uh, 219.7, almost a 220. So we're track. going to consider that ripping fast. I, I well, the track record is 223, and that was on a in an older style car. So uh, 220, uh, 220 here is good. 220, 220 clip is good, real good. Oh, what did, almost what slid did up we into say the car. Juan Pablo Montoya's time was. Juan Pablo uh, has the track record. I can put that up on the screen real quick. It's a. Uh, where did I put that? There it is. There he goes, Juan Pablo, 223.871 in 2014. I wonder if we're in a fixed, uh, sorry, in an open setup, whether we would start to get towards those times in uh, in iRacing. I, th I, I, th I would think so. I would think so. I mean, uh, we, we can look at the, uh, the conditions that we got currently right now on the racetrack for temperature-wise. Uh, we're at 90 degrees track temperature. Uh, that's not very hot. It's hot, but it's not very hot. 73 degrees ambient, that's not very hot. Um, I think in an open setup, you could probably trim these cars out a lot more. And there's one team that uh, I know that would that knows how to know that, do that, on that's on the that's in this race right now. And that's private label team hype there with Jason Brophy and his team. Those guys are really good in open setup races. In fact, in the strength of field, the race that they raced at on Monday, um, for the Indy Open at Pocono, his team finished one, two, and three. So, and and there was no yeah, one wow. close to him on uh, uh, other than that. It was them, and then it was the rest of the field. So we know that he has a good good uh, setup here, even for open. So I would imagine they could go faster. Yeah, and Chase, and we saw him. You know, you mentioned he kept pitting, kept pitting, kept pitting, pitted at one to go, restarted out all the way at the back there, back at 18th, and he has found his way back up into the eighth position. Yep, 137 of 200. Uh, current pit situation with the leaders, 17 laps each uh, for Davis and Frankenfeld. Uh, the Panero, though, the status situation with him, 23 laps on this stint. He opted not to stop. He's sticking with his strategy. Uh, he is probably due in here, I'm going to say, in about seven to eight laps because he's been pitting about every 30 laps. Yeah, Panero, I think, is going to need a yellow to win. I think he's going to get caught. Um, Does caught Jason do it with him? Does Jason come with him? Not well, this Jason time, I don't can't. think so. Yeah, Jason's already gone back to the to the normal strategy, so Panero's going to be out there by himself. Um, and I'm not sure, with nobody there, whether he can, uh, whether he can keep involved. A yellow would be perfect, you know, anywhere in the next seven laps for him would basically put him uh, in prime position, I reckon. Kevin Hayes We're to the inside earlier. of, of uh, Troiano here. He's going to look into cracking the top five. Hayes sticking it in there. He's going to go to the inside of Murphy through four, one. He exits. We're, uh, we're we were saying earlier, Chris, you know, we're coming up now towards the three-quarter part of the race, and uh, who would be your pick to win at the moment? You oh, man, that'd be so... across the first ten. Yeah, that'd be so tough. I mean, you got Ethan Stanley, Victor Del Porto. We don't know, you know, what Victor's got for pace. He's been doing economy runs all race. Jason and Adriano, obviously, have had the most speed, it looks like. They've worked together really well, but Mark's hanging around. Butch is there. I mean, it's, it's anybody's race, but I think... I mean, I think it's going to be Jason. I think Jason's the guy that's sitting here. He's got the most fuel. I think he's guy, and it, he's on a roll. Points leader. It's going to be really tough. Oh, oh Kevin Hayes! Hayes washed up big time. Had to roll out of it. That's going to cost him a couple of spots. He was on the cusp of the top five, and now he's going to fall back to 10th. 
So uh, just being pointed out, which is uh, I just missed it actually by one of the people watching on YouTube, is we are now two stops uh, from here to the end for everybody. Doesn't matter where you are. Yep. Um, it's going to be two stops. So it's, if we're running off a 30 lap average, we're at 60 to go. So uh, Hayes gets it back underway, but he fell back to 12, lost seven spots. But uh, that code brown moment brought to you by <laughs> Survival. And we got the uh, pit strategy up on the board there. We're expecting uh, expecting uh, Panero here. Probably the next two laps if he's been on. Oh, going three wide in the back with Troiano uh, and uh, Victor Del Porto. Yeah, so uh, Panero has just completed 28. Um, yep. Yeah, Realistically, it doesn't matter. Time. No, to it doesn't the matter inside. where, it, where yep. he comes in, yep. So, yeah, if he goes to 144 plus 30, that'll get him into the 170s, and that's his last stop. After, and then as, uh, he gets that in his last stop, and he's going to the lead. He goes right to the bottom, says, you know what, boys, you're holding me up. I'm going to the front. The only that thing was that's going to hurt is... Everyone else is going to have a shorter fuel run, uh, either on this one or the next pit stop. They will all be short fuels, and he won't be. He's yeah. going to need, you know, that extra precious five seconds of fuel. Precious yep. seconds. Now he could short fuel and hope, hope, for, and, and turn the wick down and uh, hope for caution, but. We have not seen an abundance of cautions here. Three wide going into one. Hang on, boys. Here we go. Three go in. Three come out, but single file. To be honest, I don't think Panero knows uh, about backing off. He's going to be just foot flat to the Three floor. Three wide in the and, two. And, oh, here they go again. And takes off the nose of Frankenfield in the uh, in the process. This is, I, I mean, I don't understand. I'm uh, now my my driving strategy in Indy cars is, you know, stay in the lead lap from, to the to the last stint and then go. Um, very much the, and I'm no Rick Mears, but that's very much the Rick Mears strategy. We're gonna go four wide to three wide again in the one. Uh, these guys are racing really hard with 55 to go. And uh, the three at the front, just building a little bit of a gap here. They are. Mark Murphy, half a second. And here's and the snake. Instead of, yeah, instead of trying to um, outdo each other, they're now working together to keep top pace. That is Joseph Morales. That's just ahead of these three. He is a lap down, but he will be in the uh, draft envelope momentarily. 1.8 seconds up to him. He is currently 18th, up 11 spots. Not a bad run for so, him. Murphy and Brophy will definitely want to uh, not let these guys skip away like they are at the moment. They'll hopefully click in what's going on and um, try and close that gap back down because you don't want these three guys getting away. They're too good to, to give them half a second on you. Waiting to see if Nick Sudik's going to get in this battle too. He's... Uh one of these guys you'll see late in oval races up near the front. And then a very unmistakable pink, bright pink wheels IndyCar. So today, uh, oval track, these guys don't have to worry about um, changing uh, tyres. It's purely just the, the one set of tyres, all race, um, which obviously changes the strategy from the road racing where they've got to run the two sets. Oh, and uh, uh, and IndyCar road racing. Yeah. So yeah, they have much like um, a Formula One. They've got two different tire compounds, and they have to switch at least one tire compound the race. So there's a hard and a and a soft. 
Uh, most IndyCar road races are three or more stops. So you'll yep. see them go, you know, typically, well, strategies vary, but you'll see one stint, at least one stint on the stops and the rest are on cards, depending on what the strategy is. But uh, IndyCar oval racing, there are no, now back in, back in the 80s and 90s, there were different compounds you could use for oval racing. Now it's a single compound. So um, you have to, they, these will wear out. You cannot wear a single set of tires for 500 laps. You'd, you'd have to change them off for sure. Uh, but uh, the way that these tires are designed, they're designed just to not last long enough for a fuel run and maybe a little extra if you wanted to go a splash and go at the end. The Panero manages to use the draft there of Morales, I believe, to help pull him a little bit forward. Uh, and he's going deeper into this run, boys. He's 35 laps instead of 30. Yeah, I was literally just about to mention that. He's, uh, he's really holding out here. Um, not sure, surely has only got one lap left. What did we see? 38, 39, I think it was from Porto. And uh, is 35 for Panero. And he would have to save quite a bit to try to connect it to, to make it on the same amount of stops. I mean, still what? Eight to ten laps he would have to. Here, he, comes. here he comes right here. Here he comes. Wow. And he just come off a 40.795 lap. Yeah. I'll let you uh, convert that, Gary. <laughs> that is, that's got to be about, I reckon, 721 to 222, maybe? 221? 795. 220.6. Wow. And considering the, um, you know, it was that's 0. 0.2 quicker than... Uh, uh, who was it? Justin Malello's fastest yeah. lap. Yeah. Two nineteen. Yeah. So exactly fifty laps to go. By the way, we're at one quarter to go. Uh, Brophy pit road. So he is jumping on that strategy. He's going to jump out there with Troy. Yeah, he feels like his best shot to win is working with Adriano there. Smart move. Smart move. He'll yeah. short fill too because he'll need a lot less fuel. And yep. uh, we'll watch the uh, car from Ethan Stanley here. He's in P6. He's up 12 spots because I want to mention about Blue Egg Marketing one more time. Blue Egg, the marketing department for small businesses. We're your marketing department. Small business owners, Blue Egg is your biggest fan. Constraints catalyze creativity. We help business punch above their weight class. Proud sponsor of the IndyCar Series and of Ethan Stanley, who is currently up to P6, knocking on the door of a top five right here at Pocono. And here comes Butch. We got more people. A lot of these guys are saying, you know what? I want to be out there with those two cars. And look at that. Panero and Brophy straight on top of each other. They have timed that to perfection. And I've got to point out, Gary, Mr. Huckleberry has been watching. And, uh, you know, he said, you are looking and sounding great. You've carried Chris and I, and you're doing a wonderful job. <laughs> Well, you know, we still have um, time to mess this up. So. <laughs> Look, as long as you're doing all the talking and it's not Chris and I, we know this is going to work. But anyways, I wanted to mention I kind of had this whole uh, kind of uh, uh, factoids on uh, IndyCar 500 mile races. Getting to the long and short of it, um, uh, Foyt won uh, 67 races in his uh, career, and uh, that made about 13% of his IndyCar wins were 500-mile races, which is pretty good, actually. Uh, in a more modern sense, the undisputed Indy 500 uh, or IndyCar 500-mile king is Rick Mears, winning all of his 500-mile races in what we would consider more com com contemporary IndyCar, an incredible 27%, so almost one out of every four, more than one out of every four of his wins was a 500 mile win. He had 29 wins, 27% of them were 500 mile wins. So that's just uh, the King Rick Mears there. Um, but uh, all that said, guys, th there's been only one driver in IndyCar history, and uh, we're also looking in this group here. Here's Butch Davis, by the way. One driver in all of IndyCar history to ever win the Triple Crown. Alan Sr. won that here uh, in 1978. He won at Ontario, Indianapolis, and uh, Pocono here. You would think that would be enough for him to win the championship. And it wasn't. The championship that year went to Tom Sneva driving for Team Pinsky, and Tom didn't win a single race. 
That sounds like something that uh, I would do because I definitely would, I'm not going to win races, but you know, if you can finish <laughs> constantly, then uh, you're always going to be up there. Now, speaking of Team Penske, Chip Ganassi and Team Penske. Chip Ganassi, Team Penske. Is someone else going to challenge? Well, IndyCar history has always had a, a consistent history, uh, minus the early split years where you have two power teams. Before it was IndyCar, before it was uh, uh, Penske and Patrick racing, and now it's Penske and uh, um, Ganassi racing. I don't think you could ever, with the money they have, rule out Andretti ever. I was going to say, are we just going to kick Andretti to the curb? They get that new well, building over there, that state-of-the-art building that they're moving into. It looks look at all these guys popping out here for their final, for their next to last stop. But uh, it is uh, Trajano still the leader here, and we're we're going to look at him. Um, we've been watching the who would be the leaders when the pit stops are done, but uh, Troiano is the leader. It's 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 great, and every I mean, if you if you don't love Andretti, there's something wrong. You're not following IndyCar, right? But you are you are judged by the amount of championships, and they are not winning them. No, not lately. No. I think it's coming. I think they've got, you know, if they can get the equipment right, get everything worked out, they've got some good drivers over there in the stable. Yeah, Kyle, and, and Kyle Kirkwood, um, Captain Kirk there. Um, I, I have, I like him a lot. Um, of course, everyone likes Colton. Um, so, uh, you know, I, I, and then Marcus is driving for them. And uh, to be fair, Marcus should be a two-time back-to-back Indy 500 winner. Uh, so, um, oh gosh, look at uh, Kevin Hayes. He is in this battle, folks. Once, uh, once they passed Troiano on pit road, who's coming off pit road right now, Kevin Hayes worked his way back after uh, falling back to almost 12th. There were three wide. Pinero going the one. Oh, we're going to get tight there, boys. Oh! Hayes. Kevin Hayes. Is he's right there. Brophy had to lift a little bit. Well. Yeah. Hayes up 11 spots. It's not something that we've been, you know, someone we've been calling through the race. He's just been sitting outside the top ten and at the right time of the race. Yeah, he got up. He got up and knocked on the door of the top five, and then he had a moment off of one, and he had to really get on. He lost a ton of momentum and fell back to twelfth or so. But then after this last set of pit stops, he's right back. Nick Sudik to the inside here. Until I told you, watch out for Nick. Here he comes. I'm going to tell you, that double zero looks really tight, especially off a of three. That's where he's giving up some time right now. He seems to be struggling getting off the corner. I think he might uh, want to mess with his tools a little bit more. Well, the tools they have in the car to use to help get the car to rotate through the corner. The bigger tools are the anti-roll bars, front bar, rear bar. Uh, stiff uh, rear bar, uh, a soft front bar makes your car tight, and then if you do it the opposite way, right, it makes it loose. And then the there finer he is again. adjustment. Look at him. Yep. And Way off them. Yeah. Yep. Almost got into the wall that time. Had to lit up. Let him. Let him recover. He definitely Which, has the um, pace. I'm an absolute racing novice. I love driving the Indy cars. I'm still learning about these bars and the weight jacker. The weight jacker the, the is for the finer adjustments. The weight jacker is for the final finer adjustments. Now, we're in the real Indy car racing. The weight jacker controls weight across the front of the car. In the sim, it controls the right rear ride height. So, uh, if you were to play with the button really fast in the pits, you would watch your right rear go up and down. Um, the drivers in the fixed series have learned on certainly on super speedway or, or, the, or the drafting races or the the meme races as we call them at daytona talladega i racing super speedway that if you just set that to zero twenty, 20 that lowers your right rear wing out of the wind by by everything else and that increases your speed on those tracks by sometimes as little as a tenth maybe a tenth and a half at most but that's a lot on those type of tracks but that's what that, that's what playing with the uh, the weight jacker will do is it controls the right rear height spring spring rate, and uh, that's how it lowers and raises the car and helps you rotate through the corners. I heard up of in the guys, gray. Sorry. I've heard of some guys for the Indy 500 here that will drop it on the straightaway and yes. get it back to the corner. Yes, they have hotkeys mapped that will take it from uh, wherever they have they want it set during the majority of the race. So, so like plus five. And then when they get on the straights, they hit the hot key and it takes it to the negative 20. 
And it, it's, they do it real IndyCar racing. If you watched um, some qualification runs during, uh, uh, the, for the 500, if you were, uh, saw, uh, um, uh, when uh, uh, Graham was having a hard time, they were always telling him, you know, adjust your tools. They would go on the back straight and set the, the weight jacker at one thing, and then before they get into the corner, they would set the weight jacker at something else. So they were always changing the weight jacker uh, down every straight through every corner, uh, and that's just the nature of how the IndyCar drives, even in real life. In the fixed series, you can use it as an advantage. Uh, in the uh, real IndyCar racing, you can help. It, it just keeps you busy, but it helps you get around the corners. Yeah, caught up in the, the dirty air, you you got to get it up to like a plus five or a plus seven sometimes just to, and try and get a wing out, out in clean air just to help turn it in, right? Yeah, um, plus numbers, uh, um, make actually plus numbers I believe make you tight, loose numbers make you loose. And if someone in chat says it's the other way around, it's, it's, I've actually, it's been uh, about a year since I've actually driven one of these cars. <laughs> Yeah, so the 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 tight will help in the the dirty air, is my understanding. Yeah. Whereas if it's too loose, it, you just wash out and you end up. No, the, the the loose will help in dirty air because the loose is is the back end coming around, so that's your car rotating. If you're loose, you want to tighten up. Yeah, but what yep. you got to be careful too is if you adjust it for dirty air and then you poke your nose out and you got used to it at one setting, it'll just snap absolutely and get you in trouble in a hurry. Absolutely, and yep. a lot of a lot of the um, cardinal sins, a lot of people when they learn these cars do is they, they take they do a pit stop and they forget to reset their tools and the other way other thing they do to re reset their tools is on restarts they're how their tools whatever it was when they were last racing and they'll turn into turn one and all of a sudden the back end comes out and part of that has to do with cold tires part of that has to do with not being at 100 percent up to speed and you don't have all the physics working for you but other that part of that has to do with you forgetting to play with your tools and reset them Three wide going into two here. Boys! When? We're, uh, we're also getting close to the last pit stop range. And uh, who's going to be the first to pull the trigger? Oh, I think you need to get under 30 laps. Yeah. Is someone under 30 will get chance? you home. Under 30 yep. will get you home. Just like Indianapolis. Yep. Your last stop should be always right around 170 Indianapolis. Based on if what you... we've seen today, I think Adriano is going to pit on 170. He's been doing 30, 30, 30. Everything. There is a, a, a strat that we jokingly at Indianapolis when we race against Nick DeGroote. He's out, unfortunately, when that early turn turn uh, turn one, lap two, wreck three wide, going into the two again, thinking about it, tucking back in. It's called the DeGroote strat. Whatever DeGroote does in a 500-mile race, or even if it's a race that's 100, mi it's, it's 100 laps, so 250 miles, at lap 70 or 170, you can always count on the group hitting. <laughs> so we learned that that it, at the very least, if you pit out 170, uh, you're good to go to the end. Your tires might be worth crap at the end, but your car is going to be very, very light. It's um, it'll be interesting to see, you know, have they been sitting at, at maybe fuel three or sorry, map three or map four for some of the race? So they want to turn the wick right up for yeah. map one in the last section. Yeah. And which is really going to drop that fuel run down as well. Well, and, and if you turn the wick down and you're not using as much fuel, that helps with a short fill. Yeah, which a la um, Porto, Victor. Yeah. He's um, about 39 laps, just sitting there in mid-pack, half a second off the lead. There and, he and is then another right there. thing, too, is if, if you're banking on all this strategy and you've been running fourth the whole time, and you play the strategy and you try to go for the lead, that's going to hurt your fuel mileage, too. Um, David Huckleberry said he doesn't love Andretti. I, I'm not sure there's anyone who's followed IndyCar that doesn't love the Andrettis. Come on, David. Well, I, I'll tell you what. I mean, I, I, I wasn't a fan of Michael, and, and certainly in those in the 91 and 92 races, kind of when he won away with them. The 91 and then when Mears came back on him, that was a lot of fun. But the 92 one, I was not a fan of that one. Everyone was like, wah, wah, when he had that bearing failure on the, uh, or I forget what it was. It was just a, a really cheap part that cost him that 500. He should really have at least two Indy 500 mile wins, uh, Michael to his name. But uh, unfortunately he didn't. Uh, I don't think that really the fandom really appreciated him until really the split and he wasn't there anymore. Because when he came back and he raced those last couple of races with his team, he was kind of like a, a welcome back, you know, a welcoming hero type thing coming back to the speedway. 
and I'll tell you this, I have had the chance to talk to a few of the Andretti's, and uh, there are not nicer people in motorsports, in my opinion. They were super nice, super gracious with their time. Uh, I, I feel like, uh, you know, a lot of the talk right now around Andretti is trying to get into F1. F1's really missed the boat there. More about the money and less about, you know, what they're going to bring to that series, and, and they've really missed the boat there by not allowing Andretti in. I think that might change. We'll see. I, I'm sorry, but Formula One in the last 10, 15 years <laughs> is just not interesting. You know, when, when um, I'm talking about Nigel Mansell, when Nigel Mansell was racing, when um, Frost was racing, you had real racing and the, the drivers were doing everything right. They're changing gears and no ABS and all this stuff. And you look at today's racing and it is dead set boring. They've had, you know, brought DRS in because they needed to try and get some overtakes in. Yeah. It's, I'm afraid that F1 have just forgotten about the, the what you really want to do and provide great racing to, to the fans. Uh, IndyCar has picked up a lot of F1 refugees, and we've seen that, especially in the, uh, the number of European drivers that have picked up this car on the service, and now they have enough drivers where they do their own European strength of field races. Um, there's there's a growing community within the IndyCar racing community that's European, and there's a growing fan base of European fans that are becoming IndyCar fans. Um, a number I know a number of people that, from Europe that are kind of come over for the Indy 500 this year, um, and it's I, I think if you give it a chance, they'll really like it. And uh, everybody, every driver, oh Deporto, what's going on with Deporto? And inside wall contact. I think he might have had a failure, either VR failure or wheel failure. Whatever it is, it's fixed now, but oh, that's awful. He's done. He Still is done. green as well. Still green because there's no blockage or stop car on the track. So we are going to try to... I bet it was a black screen that came back. That's what I would bet. Yeah, that's my guess too, the way that it just kind of shot to that inside wall. But yeah, there's, I think there's a growing fan base of uh, F1 fans here um, that uh, like IndyCar racing. Got a lap car involved here. Justin Mello is, uh, Melillo, excuse me, is uh, involved in this. I'm He's, really surprised uh, Adriano has yet to pick. They're in that window. Wisely leading them on by. This is your time if, uh, if you're not a, a driver that gets a chance to really get up front with these uh, bigger names, the f higher I ratings and stuff, that you kind of prove yourself that they can trust themselves or they can trust you around themselves. And he's uh, keeping a lane off the bottom, giving a clear lane for everyone there that want to pass, holding his lines well down the straight, and not jerking the wheel, just doing everything right, doing everything right. I like what he's doing, and he's, he's being predictable, and that's going to allow Chad to go to the inside, make the pass. He stays high, out of everyone's way. Good job. Yes, Seven. Still no pit stops. We're yep. well inside that window now. Uh, 70, 173 uh, of 200. So we are in the window. If you stop now, you're going to make it. I do want to thank uh, Worldwide Technology Raceway one more time. Worldwide Technology Raceway is a motorsport racing facility in Madison, Illinois, just east of St. Louis, Missouri. Close to the Gateway Arch. Really, it is. You can see the Gateway Arch from the track. It features a 1.25-mile oval that hosts the NASCAR Cup Series, Truck Craftsman Truck Series, and the NTT IndyCar Series. It has a two-mile infield road course that's used by the Speed Tour, Trans Am, SCCA, and Porsche Club of America, a quarter-mile NHR-sanctioned drag strip that hosts the NHRA Camping World Drag Racing Series Midwest Nationals event, and if you like karting, the Kartplex, a state art karting facility in this facility as well. So uh, check them out uh, on the web and uh, go check out a race there. We, uh, we know everyone, uh, it's only about a four hour drive here from Indy. You should go check it out. And Leader is got, Butch Davis. A few pit stops coming in now. Ethan, Ethan Stanley. Stanley. Mark Murphy. Yeah, Mark and Chad just left pit road. They pitted together, teammates there. Got to kick, him, kick in the tires machine for Chad and, and Mark yep. right there. Come yeah, we're watching them right now. They are, they are going to push really, really hard on this lap. They need to make, they need to maximize this lap as the, maximum um, as it can go. The times are re everybody's starting to now drop into the forty-second barrier. It wasn't just one or two. There's now seven, eight, nine people all starting to turn the wick up. 
This might be a big lap here from Frankenfeld. Let's see what he'd... Frankenfeld, a 40.1. Murphy, a 40.086. Uh, 41086. Almost, yeah. Almost in the 40s. people have dropped into the 40s. How far do you dare run if you're Adriano, if you're Jason, if you're these guys up here, Butch? Are, you get caught by a yellow here. This could be detrimental. Yeah, let's uh, take a, give you a report on these guys here. Um, and the whole lead pack, Butch Davis, uh, he is uh, 24 laps into his current stint. Uh, Jason Brophy, 25 laps into his current stint. Pinero, 27 laps now into his current stint. Uh, Nick Sudik, 22 laps into his current stint. Triano, 20 laps into his current stint. Uh, Stover, 22. Rexine, 21. Bodie, 21. Hobson, 28. So some of these guys still have to stop. He's, all these well, guys still have to you. stop. Yeah, everybody does. So, I mean, if caution comes out, you're, you're basically going behind. Uh, but we're Mark looking Murphy, at. Ag, yeah. Ealing. But we're looking at. Um, 24 to go. Yeah, in the. In the um, 180s to 190s, the final stops. Yeah, and this is where things will start to get a little bit hairy. In the in you, you've got to find that point where I'm trying to build Here a gap Hobson. to keep um, uh, Murphy and, and Frankenfield and Stanley behind, or I'm right behind them when I come back out versus the yellow, and I'm gonna get burnt. Want to thank the Warriors for Peace organization, a foundation promoting peaceful change in their world to honor the beautiful life of Jack Shockley. Check out warriorsforpeace.org for more information. Proud sponsors of the Elite Racing League IndyCar Series. And also want to thank the guys at the IndyCar 1909 podcast for being a sponsor of today's 500-mile race here at Pocono. I want to thank all the sponsors. I hope we got a, gave you guys a plenty of airtime and also an exciting race to have your name attached to. Uh, it is coming down to the final laps here at Pocono. If you're just joining us, you're late into the 500-mile race here in Pocono. We're in the final stages. We're in the Rick Mears laps, if you want to call it that. Back in the 80s, uh, we are uh, coming up to uh, the, the last 25 or so. Butch Davis is your leader. He still has a pit. Adriano Pinero is your P2. He still has a pit. Eric Triano, he is a P3. He still has a pit. So a lot of these ladies at the front still have to pit. If you're enjoying today's coverage, make sure to uh, leave us a comment in the chat. Make sure to give us a thumbs up on the uh, old program here. And uh, if you're not already subscribing to the channel, be sure to do that and click the bell so that you don't miss out on more future ERN iRacing broadcasts, and they have lots of them. Jason Brophy just came off pit road, and he is well out in front of that pack. They should run him down, but I believe that was a short fill there. He just went long and, and did not put all the fuel in the car. that he Just, uh, just put in there what he needed. Nick Sudik. <laughs> Nick Sudik jumped a number of guys, and uh, when these things cycle through, Nick Sudik's going to be P2. I told you to watch him. That's not going to make Chad happy. He's no, it's not. No, it's not. But I, but I told you to watch Nick. I said he's going to be at the end of this thing. And here he is on Brophy. Taking a look to the inside and one. And Brophy, Curry, just Brophy's just letting him go. The, uh, Brophy's going to let him go. Sorry, uh, Gary and Panero's just come down the pit lane and locked it up. Huge. Uh, just coming across oh. the line there. So hopefully he didn't get a penalty. See... Entered pit lane. I don't see any uh, penalties. We'll see if he's in that box more than 10 seconds. Three, four, five, six seconds, seven, eight, eight point one eight. No penalty down and away. That is your last stop fill. for Panero and a short fill. And we'll see where he comes out. Wow, Frankenfield with a 40.718. He, he has really got one. Well, the lead of this group, not the lead overall. And look at this bunch right here. This just you just throw a blanket over P two, three, four. I mean, geez. And this is what is going to be two, three, and four. Your leader, when we all cycle this thing out, is going to be Panero. Now, Butch Davis is on pit road right now. He is down and away and rolling. We'll see where he pops out. Panero with. Uh, what's that about? Three quarters, half a second, somewhere around. Panero has a has a car in front of him that he can use for a draft. That's going to help him. Yep. 
He's oh. gonna shoot around. Hey. Whoa, poor Butch. He's gonna go f one, two, three. He loses three now, well, positions. Butch there. He was running up front when all this pit stop stuff started. I think he, being the leader, he had to take on a little bit more fuel and gave up these spots on the other side. And 18 Tyler Foden, to go. Um, he's only just up the road from um, Panero. If he can get into the draft of Fody before he goes in for a pit stop, he might be able to just etch out a little bit more time over uh, Brophy. And, well, I think uh, Fody was on pit road last time when that lap came through. Uh, we're so so forty forty with twenty seven laps on his current stint, so he's yeah, still P three. He has yeah, not he has pitted. Been. Neither is Stover, uh, and neither is Triano. We're watching those guys right here. Even yeah, if we do have a caution, even if we do have a caution, these guys are still going to have to stop. There's not enough fuel in those tanks to go over the last ten laps at speed. If we have a caution now, so the leader when this all cycles through is right here. We're on a kind of an expanded view because this field's getting strung out a little bit. Is Adriano Pinero? Is that orange car with the uh, the bright orange rims? The Corinthian Bread King team. And Brophy with a, with a forty point seven five eight on the lap before as well. So he's definitely there. He is. He's getting closer and closer to uh, Pinero. He's just got to get inside that draft zone, and he'll catch he, him he's up. He's there. Uh, he is. Um, Brophy's two. Get a look on here in Panera one more time. He yeah. is 1.2. Yeah, so he's well with it. Well, here, watch. Obviously, you're watching. Oh, him eat it up. look at that. Yeah. He closed that gap huge down that back straight. Oh, and Mark Murphy's got a hornet's nest all around him, nearly wrecked in the tunnel turn. Boy. Yeah, that's a, that is a lot of action. And then we got a, a lapped car, I think, way up in the gray. That might be Corey Johnson. Corey did a good job at. at uh, at, uh, I don't think that is Corey. I'm not sure who that was, but he did a great job at car control of keeping it off the wall up in the gray. Butch Davis is uh, another one who's just uh, a couple of cars back. You know, he's had a great race today. Um, he probably hasn't um, quite etched out the laps that these three guys at the front have. You know, he hasn't dropped into the 40-second barrier yet, but, um, you know, Butch has been there all day. Uh... He might be able to just sneak a few in now at the right so, time. So, interesting you say that. He, he he might not have the laps, but he's in the position. I was in yep. a uh, IR1 race here, and it was my last race I ran up. It was actually for, um, uh, I forget, I think it was the Dark Horse. They had an IR1 league, and I raced the race here. The last race I've ever raced on iRacing since, the, actually, since the ban lifted for IndyCar broadcast. And I had the... Third slowest average lap time, but I finished eighth. Yeah. Points. Yeah. Everything helps. Yeah. Yeah. And just get in your car in that position. And uh, maybe not the speed, but uh, track position after a while does matter. But these guys, with the, with the way that the ambient temperature, track temps 86, ambient 73, track position is really not mattering because we've got a bit of a multiple pack race going on right here in the closing stages 13 to go uh you have to convert that to uh celsius for me uh, well, normally i'd have everything <laughs> on the screen in front of me but i'm not in the car <laughs> i can't see what the track temp is uh let's see we go go to google and it's uh 86 f2c 23 29 degrees i think it is the 29 30 it says 30 it says so it might be a round yeah. up there 30 celsius yeah. Which is a, a relatively cool track. Um, yes. You know, it's, it's it's a good temperature. Uh, that's that's what I'll say. It's a good temperature. It's comfortable. Certainly comfortable in a uh, sim car. That's for sure. Let's Not ride around. Air conditioning on here. Let's ride around with uh, Eric Troiano, our leader. He's in fifth gear. So. Troiano and Fodi are just holding that 1.6 second gap, but unfortunately they're going to have to uh, to come in. Yeah, it doesn't look like he's really saving. No. And, and you, you would know if he was saving because he would be probably in fifth or sixth gear and the revs would be kind of low. He's actually yep, shifting when, at, when, at, when the revs reach high point in fifth. And let's see if he makes the turn down pit road here. Fourth gear. Yes, here he comes. Troiano yep. is pitting. Getting down to the line there. Get him. Hopefully he didn't know penalty. Now this should be a short fill though, so they might still be right there They'll with the come shot. Bodie with them. So now 
We watch Panero. Panero, they're on the long pond. They're coming up the lo street, uh, turn two. Still have a long way to go to get to the pit road. Down the short Sudeik straight. In the uh, bright yellow and pink car. Nick, Nick Sudik. You've been following him, Gary. Yep. Nick Sudik, yep. Here they now, come. How much are tires worth? You okay. Know, these guys that are coming off the road. The, the tires are going to be good for a couple laps, especially in turns one, one and two. Triano Foti coming out of pit road. Here come the leaders. I don't think they're going to be up to speed to really contend. We'll see. Triano's up there. Triano's going to come out ahead. And there you go. Wow. Strategy on the oh. short fill. That, that's, that must have been a super, super short fill. And fresh, the freshest tires. You know, Triano. That's, that's okay, guys. Something. Here it is. Triano on pit road, 39.52. He's the only driver in the last pit stop to be below 40 in in the stall, in the stall for 5.43 5 seconds. There was no yeah. one remotely close. The next closest stop was six seconds by Fody. Everyone else was in the eight second bracket. He saved a ton of time by doing the short fill and everything on pit road. And now he's in contention for the lead and the win for a 500 mile race with 10 laps to go. The three boys have just gone straight past him though. I'd like to see him put up a bit of a fight here and, and you know, show that he can win one of these. I think they kind of the jumped on him a little bit. Oh, yeah, ooh, Rexing. That was Rexing. He reached that third that third turn wall will reach out and grab you. And uh, momentarily wanted to have a hug with him. He's not going to have it. Nick Sudik to the lead down low. Troyano's been in clean air a long time. He's got to get his tools right here, and he don't have a whole lot of time to, to get it figured out. So he's trying to, I, I, would, I would imagine, mess with all his tools, his weight jacker, everything he's got to mess with. He's trying to get it in position. Yeah, you got to reset all that on the fly, and five seconds in the stall is really not a long time to reset your tools. Panero resumes the lead. Oh, they wow. Now the snake is occurring down the front straight, or the dragon, who you talk to. Brophy's going to stay down low in the one. Brophy on the bottom side gets the lead. Iksudik kind of double pump faked in the inside. Oh, we're going to split him. 10-5 split going down. Three wide to two. You're not supposed to do that, boys. The 710 splits in the turn two. Nick it's Sudik like on the low side, the, uh... the slower side going down the main straight. Brophy undercuts him. It's going to be a nose at nose to nose at the line. There you go. Three wide back going to the one. Seven laps to go. They're lining up like it's the Indy 500 parade lap. That looks magnificent. Oh, the three wide starts are beauty. They used to do that here at Pocono as well. Oh, that would have been horrific. You would have been nervous if you're in the middle row, middle of the pack. Oh, yeah. Three wide here. Yeah. You're on the drivers, fifth row, sixth dr row. The drivers always say to a man and a woman that the start of the Indianapolis 500, even for veterans, is the most nervous they will ever be for a start of a race. Formula Nearly 1 racers will even say, even, even, yep, saw that coming off of three. Even Formula 1 racers will say even more, even more nervous than the start at, like, Monaco at Indianapolis. It's, they're more nervous there. Three wide through Look one. Six yeah. to go. And narrow your leader. We're going to go three and, wide uh, back in the one. This they've group, dropped Stanley, Troyano, and Frankenfield off here as well. Yeah, they're starting to lose pack, but they're but it kind of looks like the start of the Indy 500 when we got two rows of three. Oh, we got contact! Oh, Troyano. Frankenfield! Oh, and that's oh, two no. races in a row. I might, uh, I might have to turn you down and turn up the driver chat just to hear Frankenfield. Well, watch him here. We're watching. They're, they're getting dirty air. There's all sorts of. There was dirty a three wide. Troyano gets launched over Frankenfeld. He disappears into the ether. Frankenfeld, yeah, doesn't touch the wall. But he's lost a ton of track position. I don't think he's going to have time to get it back. He could probably stop, get whatever repaired, get new tires on, 
And we are going to have, I think we're going to have a sprint to the finish here. It looks oh, as my though goodness. Troiano has just drifted up a little. Yeah, he had dirty air, and, uh, so there was no place for either one of those drivers. They had to hold their line because immediately yeah. in front of Troiano had dirty air. Immediately in front of Frankenfeld had dirty air. I forget who the other car on the outside was. That might have been Stanley. He had dirty air. So going three wide through turn two with three wide in front of you is is really, really tough. We're under caution yeah. here. We haven't got a chance to do this yet. we got some ads we need to run. Now's a good time. We're going to come right back after we get a couple of one ad. The NASCAR Cup Series returns to Worldwide Technology Raceway on June 1st and 2nd, 2024. The time to get your tickets is now. For only $10 down, you can lock in your seats for an incredible weekend of family fun featuring the Enjoy Illinois 300 and the Confluence Music Festival. Racing, music, camping, it all adds up to one amazing party. Go to www.raceway.com for the hottest ticket of the year. Racing isn't easy, but experiencing it is. iRacing puts you in the driver's seat with the industry's leading sim racing game. Drive on laser scan replicas of the greatest racing circuits from around the world. Go head to head against other drivers chosen by skill based matchmaking to ensure competitive racing at every level. Compete across all your favorite series. In officially licensed cars, engineered to deliver the most accurate driving experience possible. Join a race or host your own with players from across the globe. Race against the computer or in a league with friends. Feel the thrill behind the wheel. Visit iRacing.com. All right, we are back. So, uh, race control has. Uh, we're going to get a USAC start. <laughs> race control said no. Uh, what is it called? The the control lap. It's when the that pace car goes in. Control. Race yeah. control did not make that call. <laughs> pace car. When the pace car comes in, we are going racing. Panero did not necessarily like that ruling. I don't blame him. That's a rules change mid race, but uh, I, I think they want to prevent it from ending under caution. Um, I, I guess this is their style. <laughs> I'm just giving everybody a hard time. <laughs> Never mind. I'm not, I was going to make a red flag comment, but I was like, no, I don't want to hear about that in the post. Blame Chad. <laughs> Blame Chad, boys. All right. I, don't wanna, I, don't want, I don't want. I don't want the producers to come after me and say, "Darn you, Gary! What are you doing?" <laughs> Dave um, will come after you. Dave will blame Chad with everybody else. <laughs> well, last, before you get a chance, uh, anybody else, make sure to like, share, subscribe this video. Subscribe to the channel. Click the bell. Make sure to hit that thumbs up. And make sure if you have a question, you want to say something, you want to cheer on one of your favorite drivers, do it in chat. Now's the time. We, I wonder, I wonder with the way Adriano's running so low that he might have just enough to finish this race barely. So was there a tally issued uh, on Troiano for the drift up there? Uh, his car has uh, disappeared into the ether. It left the racetrack. It was like Elvis left the building. Yeah, he, he you know, the 9.2 difficulty we had before? He tried <laughs> to outdo that. <laughs> well, guys, um, lights are out on the pace car. Lights are, lights are out on the pace car. We are going green this time by we are actually going to get a green white checker <laughs> beautiful but uh, yeah i didn't i didn't see uh i didn't see if there was a tally issued on um troiano or not there was 14 oh. car caught a tally okay yeah he, he drifted up just just a small amount but it was you know he come off his line chad was holding his and i think the the, the tally was always going to go to him
before we get into this, shout outs to Alan Stover up 17 spots. Ethan Stanley in P4. He's got a shot for the win, boys. He's up 14 spots. Joseph Morales, we've talked to him about him a couple times today. He's up 13 spots. So big props to these guys that have just, as the, as the Netflix show says, drive to survive, to finish first, first you must finish. Here they are. They've gone up major positions in this race. We're going green. Congrats to those guys. Hope they can hold on. Two more laps. Here we go. Adriano's on it. Sudik. He got away Brophy, early. Stanley. Murphy. And he got away. He got it. But it's not a penalty in that position. He could have taken off a little bit earlier if he wanted. Though. Is this like they got uh, too far? Yeah. If he took he off too was, early, he's going to get freight trained. And now we're watching it. No, nah, he just got um, got Sudik napping a little bit, and obviously Brophy couldn't do much about it. But um, Sudik you know, to the inside, going into the two. Back. We're riding with Sudik right now. Brophy to the inside of Sudik. Brophy to the lead. One lap down Zero. to the lead. Closing stages, 500 mile race, high side. Stanley. Stanley just putting his nose in up on, on Panero just to let him know he's there. Here comes Sudik. White flag in the air. I think Panero is in the hot seat here. He's just I think sitting I like up where Stanley the is. I think Stanley's in the, yeah, in the spot right here. Sudik looking high. Brophy kind of throws the block down now to protect against Stanley. Oh, the wild Nick Sudik kind of has the advantage. It's now the little going to warm to the inside. Here comes the snake. Brophy to the inside. Oh, Panero, Panero. going to send it. Stanley up the middle. Oh, did, did uh, Panero oh, we got go contact. too soon? Here comes Stanley. Oh. He's going below oh. the yellow line. In the three. <laughs> Snick Sudik up high. He's going to lose some momentum. Let's see if he can maintain it. Going to go three wide at the line. And the winner is Brophy. Brophy. Brophy, Sadiq, Panero, Fantastic. Uh, Murphy. That Ethan man Stanley. went from, he pulled not quite a Jacques Villeneuve from the Indy 500, but half a Jacques Villeneuve from the Indy 500. Down a lap, comes back and wins a 500 mile race by the slimmest of margins, 0 0.03 seconds over my man, Nick Sudik, Adriano Panero on that different pit strategy, put him in contention there at the end, loses by 0 0.6. <laughs> my goodness, gentlemen, throw a blanket over the top three for 500 miles. Yep. And Mark Murphy, Ethan Stanley, Kevin Hayes, you know, just a solid run from Kevin. He, he was unannounced all day and he's done really well to finish in six. Butch Davis and Chad Frankenfield probably dropped back a little bit from where they expected to finish, I think. You know, mid-race, oh, I think uh, they were considering top three is where they should have been. And uh, let's get this extra uh, displays out there. We'll show the... Uh, we'll show the uh, Results one more time there. Boop, there we go. So what was it, a wing? Yes, a wing. A wing and a prayer. There we go. <laughs> uh, but Jason well Brophy, uh, well Jophy, Jason Brophy, your winner. Nick Sudik, P2. Adriano Panero, P3. Mark Murphy, P4. Ethan Stanley, great race for him, P5. Uh, Kevin Hayes, great race for him, P6. Butch Davis. I don't think the seventh place finish is indicative of where Butch was all day. He was among the top three. Frankenfeld. In that, uh, he does recover from that incident with Troiano uh, that caused the last caution, finishes eighth. Rexy, ninth. Fodi, tenth. Uh, Justin Bolello, I don't think had the fastest lap, but he was one of the fastest cars at one point during the race. Eleventh. Alan Stover, twelfth. Hobson, thirteenth. Rebellis, fourteenth. Johnson, fifteenth. Morales, sixteenth. Troiano, seventeenth. Now we're starting to get the cars that didn't finish uh, for uh, one reason or another. Simard is eighteenth. And uh, we'll try to uh, move the results here forward. Well, boys, you know the good bit about this is we're going to ask the tough questions. I want to know what Brophy was doing on pit lane. <laughs> uh, let's see. Uh, Hasek, 19th. The Porto, 20th. Conley, 21st. Smith, 22nd. Owens, 23rd. Soar, 24th. Scholl, 25th. De Groot, 26th. Edwards, 27th, where a lot of these guys were involved in that uh, early turn one incident. And uh, Tucker, 28th. Hibbs, last week's winner, 29th. And Tony Shawan uh, rounds out the remainder of your uh, 30 car field. 
Wow, gentlemen. Whew. So three quarters of a car to uh, Sadiq and uh, another three quarters of a car to uh, Panero. You know, so top three uh, within one and a half car lengths. All right. Um... <laughs> we got Mork Murphy in the waiting room, but uh, we got Jason Brophy in the waiting room as well. I don't know if we'll see Panero. Uh, normally, he does not come to uh, my booths when we do uh, the race first races because he, he's concerned about his English, but his, his typed English is pretty good. Hopefully, he'll have a uh, race report uh, where he can uh, talk with everyone. Waiting for Nick Sudik. I know he uh, should be very happy. Um, so we'll just give him a couple more minutes. There he is. There he is. Let's uh, bring him on up, Nick Sudik. Nick, I was telling the guys, watch this guy. Watch this guy. He's going to be there at the end. Watch this guy. You're gonna be you made me look so good. Thank you very much. Talk about your race, sir. I love 500-mile races. What, what can I say? <laughs> well, I Not just, many people... Not many people jump on and use that as their opening line. Nick, great work. Um, Brant, I'm uh, I'm I'm a work of art. You can ask Gary. We've we've commentated many times together. But um, yeah, God, excuse me, dang, like, <laughs> wow. Uh, okay. First, first off, I gotta thank, I gotta thank Mad Mike. I gotta thank Mike Hurley, um, for engineering. Um, we were in position before that that first caution after that really long like almost half a race uh screen flag stint happened we were in position to actually have track position and be good on fuel to push the last stint stint half so we were going to make great time nobody else would have been able to touch us just because of the gaps that built and that caution fell so we had to kind of reconstruct everything but you know we we had a great strategy we took the track position there at the end was a little worried about the tires just because how aggressive we were running um, especially those last two, uh, two green flag runs there, those two stints. Um, but you know, I, 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 I know how to save my stuff. Yeah. <laughs> um, I, 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 I'm, I'm not going to lie though. I, I'm a little, I'm a little heartbroken. I did. Uh, so I took about a year, year and a half hiatus off from this league. Um, and then obviously like the, the broadcasting cartel as well too, kind of soured that but i mean i've i've been chasing my first win in erl for oh god probably about almost three years now uh since i started really getting into competitive um sim racing in general this is what this was the first league i joined um this in uh vor uh so you know this this it, it it's a little bittersweet but i i, I couldn't think of of a per better person to uh to get bested by at the line there than than one of my buds uh jason brophy so um yeah i mean it, to come back after damage is incredible to him um but yeah i mean this is a huge point today and i could keep talking on and on and i guys got questions sorry keep going uh yeah go ahead sorry <laughs> guys ask ask away this the, uh, he's this is going to be one of the better interviews of the year so go ask away fellas if you got any phone for him Mate, I don't think we need to. He, he has literally covered everything. What were you, um, <laughs> <laughs> what were you thinking when Brophy and Panero had drifted out to that five, five, six second lead in the in the middle sectors? There, um, were you worried about your track position then? Uh, a little bit, um, but I knew the fuel advantage would happen, and everything would kind of close together. And it, honestly, you you get to your four hundred, five hundred mile oval races. It's exhaustion. It's mental exhaustion in, in, in a real life car and in sim too, because you have to hit, especially at these super speedways, hit every single mark every time. Um, I mean, you, there's not many people that could go three wide through 495 miles mm -hmm. uh, through turn two at Pocono. <laughs> uh, but, there, but again, that's, that's why I kind of expected there to be cautions because people would get antsy, people would get impatient. And, you know, sure enough, that fell. Uh, but you know what? I'm not. I'm pretty. I'm pretty. Uh, pretty humble. But you know, when it comes to super speedway racing, I, <laughs> I know what I'm doing. I, I. I'm pretty much a lock on as a top, as a top five, top eight, no matter what. And then anything else is nice. But uh, you know, I, I definitely know my abilities here at Pocono more than anything. Uh, even even the the wonderful uh, rectangle of 
uh, of Indianapolis. So, uh, but yeah, no. Uh, real quick, I guess I give some shout outs in ca- unless anybody else has anything. No, to go right ahead, man. You earned it. This is your, your mic. Go right ahead. <laughs> okay. <laughs> we, um, don't worry about the interviewees. You're right. Go right ahead. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, uh, uh, Gary, since you're here, I'll shout out Race First first uh, for giving me the opportunity and helping uh, give exposure to IndyCar on the iRacing platform better than ever. A uh, huge expanded broadcasting lineup going forward uh, to you guys as well as in the ERL network uh, and the associate people around that as well, too. Uh, okay, uh, actual uh, sponsors on my car this time. Uh, let's see here. Uh, Team Watson Racing Setups, uh, James Watson. Runs a great NASCAR program. Uh, other vehicles as well, too. I build um, GR86 stuff. It just as a little side job because I love the Toyota and I love PCC because I'm crazy. And I love <laughs> crazy slow multi-class racing. Uh, let's see here. Ohio DDR and the uh, Ohio Rhythm Game community always, always showing up. I always have one or two people minimum watching uh, here uh, whenever I'm on Twitch. Uh, All-American iRacers as well, too, for picking me up. Uh, about a year and a half ago as well, too, and kind of having a partnership and uh, using, helping with their resources and vice versa. Uh, do I have anybody else? Uh, uh, Maria, hi, I know you're watching. Thank you for your support and believing in me. Uh, my best friend, Kelsey. Hi, thank you, Tubular. <laughs> uh, and Jordy, my wonderful dog who's coming here to give me kisses. Thank you, baby. <laughs> okay, and that's it. Uh, th- and yeah, thanks again, everybody. You know, we're we're so hyped. Indy IndyCar, yeah, IndyCar, Jordy. Thank you guys. Have a good night. <laughs> All right, congratulations, Ben. We'll send him back to the waiting room where he's going to uh, definitely celebrate. We'll bring up Jason Brophy, our winner. And that's what we've got time for today. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, Jason. Uh, last week, uh, IndyCar gods take it away. This week, IndyCar gods tried to get take it away. But somehow you said, no, God, I'm going to take it back away from you and came back from a lap down. So you did half a half a Villeneuve at Indianapolis and came back and won this thing, even by the narrowest of margins. Still, you won it. Congratulations. Tell us about your race. You had us all on our toes and we are watching you all race long. You are definitely this race is Mr. Excitement. <laughs> Thanks. Uh, lap, lap 24, obviously, I saw Adriano pit and. And the whole plan was, I didn't have a plan beforehand, but I knew we were going pretty slow. And so I thought, you know what, I'll latch on to him. We can just go swap and go fast. It'll be more entertaining than uh, riding in this pack because I was losing ground doing the fuel save and stuff. And and then, uh, well, I I had the bias too far backwards. And I'll be honest, no, Racing Gods didn't try and take it away from me. They saved me on this one because because uh, <laughs> I I saw the barrels coming and I I was I knew I'm hitting the barrels. This I, like it's and it just skimmed right past and uh, I, I you know bent my wing hitting the barrels and then I I released the brake and when I rolled into the wall, you know I, I get to hear you have wheel damage. Oh, really <laughs> great. So I rolled in my pit box and it says it's all repairable and but uh, you know what we just got to go drive it and see what happens because because at that point I wasn't really a lap down you know I'd be a lap down in between um, but I was just hoping okay you know lose the five seconds plus whatever and then just try and latch onto the pack when they pit and I just missed it and so you know thankfully the next one the way it worked out I was able to work my way through the pack get back toward the front and then finally latch onto Adriano and we did what we wanted to and pulled away and. And I'm not sure I wanted the caution because they didn't actually change the way the car handled when I got it fixed. Maybe a little bit less tight, but also the temps were going down. So, um, And then, you know, it was just trying to get to the end, trying to be in the right position. I don't know that I played that right, but I think when Ethan poked to the inside going into three, I felt pretty good as long as I didn't, you know, end up flying into the fence at, uh, at the entry to three as well. Uh, you know, because that gave me, Adriano had to kind of, play both sides and it gave me enough of a run coming out of the corner that I could carry momentum in the finish so uh, you know it was a great day overall glad I could make it eventful uh, wish I hadn't done that at the start uh, but I did live <laughs> up to reputation and still still came up with victory so uh, raced really well at the end with everybody that was it was a lot of fun um, even though it's it's stressful racing you know haymakers back and forth throwing throw back and forth three wide through the tunnel turn as the middle car I would I did not enjoy that and I did it twice uh <laughs> So, you know, I, I think that's a uh, great race for everybody. You know, I was racing with Panero. Uh, a lot of fun and really well to work with. Okay, so, Brant, um, go right ahead. I know you have questions for him. Look, I did not realize that the car had that much damage um, when you tried to play with uh, the barrel. So 
when you came in, we were like, what's he doing? He keeps coming back into the pit. He's going, there's three laps in a row. He must have got damage. And I was going through the footage going, where did he get this damage from? Because you were doing low 41 second laps with Panero with a damaged car. I mean, I can't do 41 with a normal car, let alone 41 <laughs> yeah. with a damaged car. It didn't hurt me seemingly in the swap or anything, but I knew in traffic it made me tighter a bit. And, and I just... There was long enough left in the race, I figure, I want to get that fixed, because the other side of it is if I hit something real light with the right front, technically it's probably a weaker toe link, some stuff like that. So I didn't want to gamble on, on you know, breaking the car even more. Um, so I figured I'd get it fixed the way I'd been racing. I felt like I could get back to the front by the time we had, um, you know, and, and it worked out. I got back to the front by the time we did the first pit stops and then just stayed there the rest of the race, basically. Um, you know, didn't mess up my pit stops once I got to... Uh, you know, the, the brakes sorted out. I actually felt like I had some pretty good ones in there, um, which for me is a miracle. So, uh, yeah, but, you well, know, felt, felt okay. The brakes were just a little awkward. It's it's one of those I was afraid to lock up the brakes, so I was just pushing to where it wouldn't lock up, and it was a little sketchy once or twice, but also pretty fast. So, the the two blokes who locked up going into pit lane finished one and three. So uh, obviously, it, it works for you. So you should keep doing it. Ah, oh, the Panera do it as well. Yeah, he uh, his was on the I think the second last stop. He's <laughs> his was nowhere near as bad as yours. Um, ah. But uh, yeah, clearly it uh, doesn't matter how good you are, you still make mistakes n- uh, now and then. So, but mate, you made you ran an absolute incredible race. Um, the the first sector when you did drop out, I did think you'd get back in uh, within a couple of fuel runs, and and what you and Panero did. It took the other guys, I think, too long to react to to you guys uh, chopping and changing. And by then, you'd done all the damage. When the yellow came out, uh, probably wasn't great timing for you, but, um, you know, you stuck at it. And at the end, the three wide racing in the last five laps was unbelievable to watch. Absolutely yeah. unbelievable. Oh, yeah. I, I actually think that yellow, from a, from a timing standpoint, would have been perfect if I wasn't going to fix my damage. <laughs> you know, you just pit, cycle to the front, everything's great, and then. But I, I decided I wanted to get my damage fixed. I was kind of hoping to try and pull the same thing, you know, get get him to pit with me at like 58. But it's risky because if if you know I do the same thing or if I mess it up again or he messes it up, you, one car's not faster than the group. It's it's you have to have two cars swapping back and forth, and it's you know as you saw three four tenths faster. So so we pulled it off. We were doing it really well. I I felt really good about how we were swapping. Um, so, you know, want to give credit to Adriano. He's a lot of fun to race with. Really great, really great to race with. So, uh, You had to t- uh, short fill just to get the timing right as well, because uh, obviously there was only, I think, maybe around 18 laps left or something like that. So you timed it to perfection. But yeah, you, you ran an absolute great race. Nick and Adriano, congratulations to all you guys. And uh, Gary, I don't know if you've got anything. No, that's uh, thanks. Uh, if you got any shutouts, Jason, go right ahead. You earned it. But uh, yeah, like I said, the IndyCar, IndyCar gods give it, and IndyCar's uh, take it away. And you got it back after that uh, wheel-to-wheel loss you did last week at New Hampshire. So go right ahead. Thank you. I uh, want to thank Tommy Ty. Uh, you know, run private label team hype kind of thanking them a lot lately. Um, <laughs> you know, appreciate them giving me the opportunity to run this stuff and. Uh, Obviously, Chad for putting on the league. He's had some rough goes of it in the ovals. I think he went to eight after this one. But um, uh, you guys for broadcasting it. Um, didn't really have some help on the, the pit box tonight. They were in their own race. But I was in chat with Phil and, Phil and Josh for there for a bit. Uh, who else? So uh, Sudik, Panero, everybody that I raced with. Like, that was that was a lot of fun. Uh, you know, the racing overall felt really nice. I really was res- pretty respectful. Obviously, there were some big incidents. But, you know, that's racing. Uh, yeah. I didn't have any. Everybody did well, so. P2 last week, P1 in the 500 miler this week on the Crown Jewel. Congrats, we'll catch you at the next one. Thank you. All right, boys. Uh, that is it for the night. Uh, going on to Phoenix here in two weeks. Final thoughts on the night, and then uh, looking ahead to Phoenix. Yeah, uh, I haven't gone back and had a look at the championship uh, points uh, at the end of this one. So this will be real good points for Panero. Uh, he was you know, a fair bit way down. Uh, this will get him back uh, up a little bit. Brophy extends his lead. Um, Sadiq, I'm not sure where he was on the points. Uh, have you got those handy at all there, there, Gary? Uh, I do have, and I can... Uh, still learning the, over, uh, the overlay here. Uh, let's do this, and let's... 
this. And then let's see if we have the points. That's what we had going into this race. So Nick Sudik was eighth. Um, so yep. he finished ahead of Del Borto. Um, Panero, Forsyth did not race. Rexing uh, had a, uh, was back further back. Fody almost. He had a good strategy. Uh, Ethan Stanley had a good race. And, of course, I, he beat everybody. But, bro, he, so he's going to go up a couple spots there. And good for, good for him. And, um, of course, Chad Frankenfeld, uh, he'll go up a couple spots, but not as many as he wanted. And uh, uh, let's see, where is uh, Panero? Panero will go up a couple spots, too, because uh, at least Forsyth wasn't racing today. So he'll go up at least one. But uh, yeah. that's what the, pe the points were going into today. Yeah, well, that really sets up Phoenix in a couple of weeks, doesn't it? You know, uh, again, everyone's going to be chasing uh, Brophy down, but, um, you know, Panero. Uh, did he? He had an, the accident the the race before, which let him down. But he's not going to want to let Brophy get too far ahead of him. Um, you know, he's the reigning champion, and uh, he will definitely come back. So I'm really looking forward to um, to seeing uh, what happens at Phoenix. Do you like that track, uh, Gary? Uh, if we're at the proper Phoenix, the 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 new NASCAR eyes Phoenix, I do not like Phoenix. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm, Chris, I'm glad I asked that question. <laughs> uh, Chris, uh, you you made us sound good tonight too, as well. And that's uh, also up here admitting any final thoughts on today's race and going to Phoenix next, in about two weeks. Well, I'll tell you this: nobody likes the new Phoenix NASCAR guys, Open Wheel guys. Nobody likes it. I, I love agree. it. <laughs> I love it. I love it. All right. Well, I do have a note here from Adriano. He says, hello, guys. I want to congratulate Jason on his excellent victory and Sadiq on P3. The race was very difficult, and I didn't have the correct strategy, but the last yellow helped me fight for victory, and I'm happy with the result. A great night for all, Adriano. So uh, that is Adriano's report. Uh, that's it for tonight for everyone here. Uh, once again, your podium from Pocono is Jason Brophy, uh, your winner by the slimmest of all margins over <laughs> Nick Sudik and Adriano Spinero coming to the line. Join ERN again Tuesday, uh, Thursday, March 14th for round seven of the 2024 A Warriors for Peace IndyCar Series as the teams and drivers move to the proper version of Phoenix Raceway. Coverage begins around 7.45 p.m. Eastern and again at 7.45 p.m. Eastern. And you can find everything right here on YouTube at youtube.com slash elite racing network now as you know the youtube gallery in the game is not easy so please help support erN with the weekly grind leave a comment below let them throw with your thought of tonight's race and if you enjoyed tonight's coverage support them by smashing the like in the video if you are new click subscribe and while you hit it while you're at it hit the bell for weekly reminders so you don't miss out more of other erN's i racing action uh, for business inquiries to learn more about what uh, they do, visit uh, Elite Racing Network uh, on uh, the uh, web or follow or like them on uh, Twitter. Uh, I don't have any of our Twitter handles, but uh, you can probably find all of us just by searching our names. So for Brant Johnson, Chris Wright, everyone at ERN, I'm Gary Gotts saying all good night. Thanks for watching. All our men and women serving in the military and as first responders, Godspeed, God bless, and come home safe. Catch us again, again, March 14th at Phoenix, the proper Phoenix, for the next race of the Warriors for Peace IndyCar Series. Good night, everyone. <laughs>